We are going to play a quick ad from one of our sponsors, so stick around and we'll be back in a minute. And welcome back. This is Summer Games Done Quick. Coming up next, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. You are not going to want to miss this run. It's going to be so exciting. It has a million great donation incentives that you will want to stick around for and also donate for. So go ahead and check that out on the website, gamesdonequick.com, to see what you can put your money towards. Uh, there's song incentives. There's other incentives. There's just too many to list. So. Check that out and be sure to stick around for that. Uh, and we are just going to take a quick ad break and we will be right back. Humble monthly subscribers get over $100 worth of games for only $12 every month. They get to keep their games just like a regular Humble bundle. Also, there's the Humble Trove, which is a new collection of Humble Originals and other DRM-free games, and it's only available to humbly, Humble monthly subscribers. So I don't know if you guys have ever used Humble Bundle. I know I personally have bought tons of games from them. It's always a great price, and they always fill up my inventory of games with more games than I could ever play, but it's great. And also, part of the proceeds go to charity every time, so it's just a great cause. If you have not checked out Humble Bundle, make sure to do that. Rated E for everyone. Yo, Earl, we made it back to Earth. And it only took 26 years. Not bad. First thing we need to do is get some new pages. Mine must be broke, because I haven't gotten a page since 1991. I just hope people recognize us now that we're all high def or whatnot. Earl, I'm red with three legs, you're orange and huge, we're aliens, and we're mad funky. People gonna recognize us. Toe Jam and Earl, back in the groove. It's an all-new adventure game from 1991. Coming in 2017 to PC and console from Adults One Game. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2017. Do you want to read off a quick $600 anonymous donation? <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And they just say, killing the animals looks too far ahead. Let's tighten that lead a bit and see if we can make an, an actual proper race. I feel you, anonymous. All right, guys, I've had fun hanging out with you, but now I'm going to throw it over to Edo Bean, and she's going to take you through the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I am Meadow Bean. I'm going to be your host today for the lovely Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix by Bloody Biscuits. I cannot wait. Um, just so that you guys know, um, we still have the uh, B 
bid going up for the Kingdom Hearts songs, for our Disney songs that we will be singing. Um, so just keep on donating. If you want them to win, it'll be the top five. Right now, Mulan, I'll Make a Man Out of You is winning. Uh, we have uh, Little Mermaid, Part of Your World in second. Beauty and the Beast with Gaston. And we have Aladdin, A Whole New World, and Aladdin, Friend Like Me. So if you want Hercules, Go the Distance, or Hellfire from Hunchback of Notre Dame, or I Won't Say I'm in Love uh, from Hercules, Bare Necessities from Jungle Book, or Reflection from Mulan, if you want those to get into those top five, go ahead and donate now. Also, don't forget, guys, we are still trying to reach our bit incentive for Majora's Mask Blindfolded. Fight Majora Blindfolded? That sounds insane. So we are accepting bits. And right now, we are at, whew, we are a lot right now. We're at a million and four hundred and five thousand six hundred and forty-six. But we need five million. We can make it happen, right? I hope so. I think we can make it happen. So let's do that. We have a $10 donation from Animal Blue that says, Hello everyone, first time donating and long time viewer. Finally got my first job, and what better way to spend part of my salary than on my favorite game of all time. Put this towards the Disney song Gaston, because no one's slick like Gaston. Teiji donates $250 saying donating because Cover Muffin is amazing. I want him to be my best friend. Shout out to whoever made the GDQ song. Please upload it onto YouTube. Yes, please do so. I would love to, love to hear it again. Anonymous donation of $5 saying, Donate it, I have. Reading like Yoda, you have to do. May the RNG be with you. Thank you, Wildfire, for your $10 donation. I always donate during the Star Wars games because I want to force my bad jokes on you. Thank you for all your hard work at SGDQ. This is my donation for this year. Thank you so much, Wildfire. I appreciate it. And then just for those that were wondering about the uh, later games that are coming up, uh, we have met our incentives for the Kingdom Hearts. Um, so we will be seeing that Sephiroth fight. We will be seeing the Terra Lingering Will. Um, and we'll also be doing the uh, third bonus game as well. Uh, once again, you can still donate during, uh, for the Disney songs as they will be throughout uh, the run. So keep on donating if you want it to be met. Also, we also have an incentive that has yet to reach its met. It's for Final Fantasy VII, Omni slash Sephiroth. Come on, guys. We want to end, we want to end that run in style, but we need $20,000. And right now, we're only at 4,201. So if you really, really want to see Cloud beat up Sephiroth in the most stylish, longest fashion ever, please donate for that incentive. $50 from Anonymous that says, looking forward to watching the Fall Fantasy VII run, hoping to see the end before I need to run a 5K. Oh, wow. Props to you.
All right, and I think we are ready for Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Take it away. Awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. So, uh, this is Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix on the uh, 2.5 PS4 version. Uh, I want to go just over some quick introduction introductions. I'm Bloody Biscuits. Uh, you guys can introduce, introduce yourselves. I'm Mydax. Jay Hobbs. I'm Spike Vegeta. Yeah. This is Kingdom Hearts. We're going to be playing on uh, critical mode, and uh, we have a timer ready. All right. Uh, three, two, one, go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy runs this game every day. Yes. He forgot where the he timer forgot starts. That there's a rumble pack. So, this um, is going to be a great run, trust me. So right off the bat, you can probably tell it by looking at the screen right there. Critical mode is just the highest difficulty. Um, there's the original Kingdom Hearts 2. You might have played for the PlayStation 2. Um, that has just three difficulties, beginner, standard, and proud. As you go up in difficulty, stuff does more damage to you. You do less damage. Uh, critical mode is actually an exclusive difficulty to the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix version. Uh, you can kind of think of Final Mix as almost like the director's cut version. That was originally a Japanese exclusive, but when they brought the HD ports over for PS3, and PS4, now they're, uh, they're available to everyone. Yeah, and he's playing on PS4, which means that we're going to be talking really fast because all the loads are gone. <laughs> yeah, they took out, they sucked all of the loads out of these games, so it's really good. So he's attacking it, Cypher right here, in a very specific set of hits to actually manipulate RNG for two dust. We are doing RNG manipulation this early in the run, yes. Yeah. So, you'll see it coming up here for the first dusk. Um, basically, there's no way to actually kill the desk with the, this, this foam bat that we have, uh, the struggle bats. Um, so we either want to die quickly, which we're going to prefer to do, mm -hmm. um, or just deal enough hits and it kind of ends the fight. So he's just going to run into the cage over here. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, death abuse. It's just there are a lot of points in the game where the game will just let you get to really low health and then you can just continue the story. And that's much faster, especially on critical mode, because in critical mode we're going to be taking a lot more damage than normal. <laughs> yeah, dude, a dusk. We did it. So if you're completely unfamiliar with this game, it's an action RPG, uh, and the kind of important things to note about you know, your UI and, and how the game kind of works is that in the bottom left corner, you see that menu there. Right now it just says attack and question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh, but we'll be unlocking new abilities and new uh, magic and stuff like that that he'll be menuing with the D-pad in that uh, bottom left corner. So we'll talk about each as they come up. Right here on day two of this little Roxas section, the character we're playing as, we need to complete one of these missions, and it'll let you go on. This is the fastest one. Do we have a six? Yeah. Nice. That was good. <laughs> Pretty good. They actually made that harder in the PS4 version. And just a tad. <laughs> um, there's little pieces of tech to it. It's not super yeah. applicable but uh, to the rest of the game. But yeah, there's lots of like jumping to reduce lag for yeah. when you land on the ground and such. A lot of so. people might not know that you only have to do one job to get past this day. Yeah. Some people might have been like stuck here for hours doing it like 30 times in a row to like farm money for the extra AP, but we only have to do it once to get through the day. Yeah, and kind of our uh, main point right here, we're actually not playing as the main character, we're playing as uh, Roxas instead. Your boy Roxas. <laughs> and yeah, uh, boy. we just kind of have to do a lot of these basic mission things as the game is trying to tell us something's going on, something weird is happening, and eventually uh, we'll be out of this area and move on to our main character. So this Dusk is also manipulated right there, so he knew what pattern he was going to give him, he knew what he had to do to get the certain amount of hits. Kind of imagine like it's got a health bar, you just don't see it, and you're not actually dealing damage. Picking up a shield here, this is going to uh, kind of change his ability route later on. Uh, the order in which he gets the abilities as he levels up, and that's what's most important, as well as a little bit of extra defense. Right here, so generally you don't want to hit one of these dusks, these basic enemies, with a finisher unless you know it's going to kill because that's going to knock them far away as opposed to just hitting them with a couple of air hits, landing to end the animation and reset your combo, and then jumping and going again. Now we're walking up to kind of our first boss, Twilight mm -hmm. Thorn. Exclusive to critical mode right here. He switched some camera stuff, but boom, got all those. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to note real quick, the menus in this game are delicious to do fast. Yes. They're very quick, they respond very well, you can buffer stuff. It's, they're some of the best menus in RPG speedrunning in my opinion. Yeah. But um, all those abilities you just got, those are exclusive to critical mode. Um, critical mode is an interesting difficulty in that 
a lot of things can two, three shot you, even one shot you all over the place, but you actually do more damage than you do on standard and proud, the second and third difficulties. Beginner out damages you a little bit, but not by much. They're almost the same length in terms of a full run, both just under three hours in the world record. Yeah, it's actually insane how close it's been in the record for those of gone back and forth constantly right. on which uh, version's actually faster. And a lot of what allows Critical Mode to catch up to Beginner is because of those exclusive abilities it just gave you. A big one, the kind of the major one, is that they gave you Finishing Plus. So normally, like right now, you see he's got this three-hit combo, one, two, and then the third is the finisher. Now he's actually going to have a four-hit combo, and the third and fourth hits are both going to deal critical or uh, Can uh, I get some uh, Goofer Z in chat, please? <laughs> what a baller. That's the face of true perfection. He literally just had to wait there. This is your tutorial boss. It's yeah. teaching you about these things called reaction commands. What a reaction command is when a triangle shows up in the bottom left corner, like now, and you can actually use it in order to uh, do some kind of effect or affect the boss in some way. And it also uh, happens with a lot of regular enemies as well. We'll be seeing them throughout the entire run. All right, bloody, I believe in the four combo. Yeah, it's easy. So Roxas, uh, it definitely got better in the PS4 version, so that's good. That, he knows he got kind of the maximum amount of damage he could output there. Now he's going to get in one combo here, with adding in that finishing plus. Now he's moving around to this corner because you see those creepers on the floor. There we go. He just knocked them away on that combo. These vines will damage him, so he has to back away from them after each time. Audio cue for those creepers to land, so he dodges them as well. Now he should be pretty good on this fight. Should be right here. Hell yeah. Right. Yeah. The main goal is to stay real close to his face. Uh, typically, he shoots vines at you if you're at a very far distance, but if you're right up in his face, there's a safe zone where he just doesn't shoot vines. So that's the optimal way to go about it. Yeah. I'm going to say right off the bat, just with like all these fights, in addition to trying to not die, he's equipping guard right there. He'll be using that. Well, actually not in the... <laughs> You'll see it later on. Um, but... Um, uh, all throughout this game, there's so many little minute details to like, even, he did, you don't just want to generally go in front of the face, he wanted to be kind of at that corner to make sure on his big finisher, he was going to hit both of the creepers and set the fight up correctly. Now we have to do a series of struggle fights, and these are pretty obnoxious. Luckily, Crit has that finishing plus and an ability called Draw to help him out with it. Draw helps pick up uh, items on the screen yeah, from nice further cool. away. Yeah, good stuff. Got a very nice job with Hainer there, and he's going to be coming up to the next struggle fight, Vivi, which is a uh, has a pretty nice strat, but is notoriously like difficult to learn for. Beginners. Bloody, you developed this. Strat yeah, there's or? there's yeah. A, a little bit of a newer strat. I hopefully I nail it here. So the so. kind of thing to notice with this is that he's not always finishing his combo. You know, he's not just mashing X to win, right? He, he's actually specifically stopping a lot of his combos here because we know when uh, Vivi will retaliate. The damage he took there was intentional, but he had to get back onto the ground very quickly there and he go. finishes the fight. Yeah. Those are real good struggles. I'm pretty happy with that. So now we take a break from struggles. We got two fights here. To note, if he dies to either one of these fights, he'll have to go back to before VB because it sends you back to the last time you're able to like basically get into your menu. Uh, Dusks suck. This is a notoriously just kind of trashy fight. Um, he's going to try to utilize the reaction. That was really good, though. Um, he's going to try to utilize the reaction command, the reversal, to sometimes swap around them and kind of keep them stunned. Axel needs to get off six combos here, Hobbs. Take it away. Yeah, so he's going to be hitting the first two as quickly as possible because they won't kind of add to his stagger count, which we'll get into later. Uh, he's going to be mashing out a guard there in order to avoid that retaliation that he knew was coming. One more combo. Nice. And there it is. It looked like it was just kind of wailing on him, but that is a very specific combo with very specific timings that you have to do in order to prevent him from doing like a stronger move. Yeah, that, that wastes a lot of time. It's also very easy to get uh, to have your finishers completely miss Axel. Sometimes you have to put all these delays everywhere, or, uh, or you know, even fast timing in certain spots. Why are we dying here, Dex? This is hardly a game. Well, it's easier. I'm really bad. It's That's why. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Cool. Because well, I mean, he's the hardest character to fight right. in the game. Yeah. That is hopefully our last death of the run. <laughs> we also get a, uh, a medal there that's going to give us one extra strength. 
Yes. That normally he would give you a championship belt, which would give you a bunch of resistance, uh, like to different elemental attacks. Now we don't need that. I actually want to get into this a little bit right here because I'm sure Edo's got like a million donations and such to read as we move up to a couple of sections here. Uh, so you, as you guys know, there are Disney songs that will be sung during this. They'll be sung during each of the gummy missions. Uh, we're actually only taking the top five this year, so during the first five gummy missions. First one's coming up here in about maybe 15 minutes or so right now. Um, so it's going to be whichever one has the most donations will be sung first, and then we'll go in descending order. So if you guys want to try to snipe that, get one of those like sixth, seventh, eighth place songs to get it up there. I want to see my boy Zem. He's got the sixth and seventh place songs right now. He could either do Go the Distance from Hercules or Hellfire from Hunchback of Notre Dame. I know the internet loves that song, so try to get in those donations. They're all within like a couple hundred bucks of one another. Yeah, and we'll, uh, like Spec said, we'll be doing those for the first five um, gummy the, missions. The first five gummy missions. All of them will happen within the first hour and a half of this run. Right now, we're kind of in our, our little, like, mission area. We're, what they call it is uh, Seven Wonders. There's Seven Wonders of this town, and they uh, need to go kind of examine each one because the kids are, I don't know, starting a detective agency or something. <laughs> They're just missing Scooby-Doo. Anyways, um, so these VVs, basically he just tried to pull them all to the center of the arena, those initial three, because after that the spawns are random. But if generally you're in the center, you have a little bit easier time to kind of pick them off as you choose. Um, coming up here, we've got uh, Shadow Roxas this fight. Um, some specifics to understand about Roxas right off the bat, he equipped the metal right there, which again is going to give him that plus one strength. That's going to be equipped for the rest of the game. So it kind of shows you how important it was to just go ahead and lose that Setzer fight back yeah. there. The metal's going to have an immediate effect on this fight right here. We're going to be doing a little bit more damage. Uh, Roxas's first two hits are interchangeable based on proximity to the enemy you're fighting. So there's both a lunge and there is an overhead swing. Of course, he's yeah. going for the man strats. But Those, I was actually, yeah. Their combos are incredibly difficult. Basically, the shorter or the smaller an enemy is, the harder it is to get off those constant air combos. They made Roxas have kind of... I, I, I like to think it's intentional, because otherwise... Uh. <laughs> but yeah. Roxas, Roxas is kind of... Real a, baggy pants, yeah, man. He's he intentionally more clunky to use. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, when we get Sora later, you feel instantly more powerful. And because of that, doing air combos with him especially um, is incredibly difficult to do. So, uh, anyways, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump in because we've got, basically we're going to be doing this mini game, press triangle, you win, and then like you walk for a while. So, Edo, crank out some donations. No problem. We have a $10 donation from Earthbound Ian saying, The KH community has been like a family to me. I'm honored and blessed to be here in person and experience with it with the community. Love you, BB, and good luck and have fun, yeah, man. Your boy uh, Ian's actually on the couch back there cheering me on. So, thank you, Ian. I really appreciate yeah, that. Albert in his lap. He has a sweet tattoo on his arm. If you guys didn't see it on Twitter, it was amazing. Amazing. We have a $15 donation from Daniel that says, I love Kingdom Hearts and I love Disney. I am in GDQ heaven. May the RNG gods be ever in your favor. Also, let's get Herc in the song mix. We can go to distance. I heard Zem sing once. It was pretty cool. I'd like <laughs> he, to do, I'd like he to do is so. all right. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's okay. almost it's as good as me. It's not like he's a professionally trained opera singer or anything <laughs> like that. Thanks, guys. I don't know if it's, uh, <laughs> You're welcome, Zim. Oh, he's here? His, uh, his, Did you sign my shirt? His breathing patterns weren't too great, though. No, so, no. Oh, I agree. I work on that, yeah. but it's okay. He'll work on that. He'll so, he's a good boy. We're moving on to the end of our seventh wonder here, uh, which is just to go investigate this mansion, which uh, the mansion seems a little bit weird. Yeah. Uh, might be coming back later. <laughs> Can I investigate a little bit more? Sure. <laughs> For now, we're just going to watch a cutscene. And How many times do we have to come it. back to this mansion? My yeah, let's get another donation out there. Um, we actually have a $500 donation Ooh, yeah. from Avenger339. <laughs> saying, hey, BB, when's the next plat run? <laughs> <laughs> those, are, uh, those are something. Hopefully the game doesn't crash, but yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so we're being introduced to our uh, second enemy of the game here. As soon as he finished off the second dusk, it's going to be an assassin. Here it is. These assassins are pretty deadly. Again, we're on critical mode, and you haven't really seen him take any damage yet, but there are some things that will one-shot him as well as a lot of things that will two-shot him uh, or three-shot him, so he has to actually make sure that he avoids that opening attack that the assassin gives and catches him in a combo quickly before he can get away. Yeah, so a lot of it is about timing when your hit goes off. Because a lot of them will have kind of a mechanic we just call super armor, 
where they'll take damage, but they won't actually stagger from anything. Mm -hmm. So we have to time stuff pretty specifically. Yeah, super armor, brick wall. I like to call it brick wall. Brick but, wall, yeah. Um, yeah. So we can actually fit in a few more donations while we're walking down here. There's, there's not much downtime in this game, so we got to take it where we can get it. No problem. We have a $10 donation from Anonymous that says, Longtime watcher, first time donator. Love the marathon every year, and this goes to Hellfire. By far the best Disney song. I like how you gave a fist pump. Like, I don't know what Hellfire is. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, make it happen, please. <laughs> Now, I also want to just say real fast, I would love it. I know everybody out there has been donating so generously. I know a lot of you are watching. I would yes. love it if we could hit $900,000 raised for Doctors Without Borders by the end of all the Kingdom Hearts stuff. Yeah. So get on it, people. Yeah. We've never actually hit a million on Friday, the second to last day. Ooh. I think it'd be cool if we hit 900000 during this and then push for a million during the Mario relay. I know you guys can do it. Let's make it happen. All right, so now awesome. we're investigating the mansion, finally. <laughs> we're, we are almost out of Rox's section, which is uh, nice. <laughs> this is just, uh, it, it's a pretty slower section. We're just, it's the well-known tutorial section, but yeah, yeah, we're just about done here. So we got two ways of enemies here. We've got these four dusks. Again, he's going to be trying to angle his attacks to where he's hitting multiple dusks at once. Once he kills three of these dusks, it will spawn the second wave. So once that happens, he's going to want to kill one of these assassins, move over, time that. Mm. Ooh, dusk Ooh, that interrupted dusk. There. Yeah, unfortunately. So now he has to play to bit safe because the yeah. second assassin could try to take him out while he's killing the first. It's looking like it might happen, but he's going to be able to retaliate yeah. just in time. <laughs> nice reaction. Excellent guard, and he should be able to take him out here now. A little sloppy, nice but not yeah. too bad. All right. As with a lot of RPGs, uh, fights kind of can give you a million different patterns. You've got to be able to adapt to any of them. All right, so now we're in Super Saiyan form. We've got two Keyblades. You'll be seeing this more later with Sora. But he's basically going to be finishing up this combo. That was actually two finishers there. Linking it into an air combo. It's going to push him into the wall. He has to mash out this triangle to make sure he gets the reaction command. Let him land to kind of set up this linking the, air, the ground combo into the air combo. Very nice. Um, so basically what you just saw right there with Rox is having the two Keyblades. That was kind of showcasing a, uh, a mechanic of this game called Drive Forms that we'll be seeing in just a little bit with Sora. Foreshadowing. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, one mechanic of it is that, you know, normally, again, because finishers are so strong, we like to get to them as quickly as possible. By pressing square while you're in that form, you can go straight into it. Enjoy how quick uh, menus are. Now we're Sora, so we uh, immediately steal all of our party members' items. Because cool menu. We can use them yeah. a lot better. <laughs> we can use our party members' items a lot better. We also set them to party attack, which uh, basically you can change how your allies will attack enemies. You can change their, their AI behavior. And party attack will, allow, will make them um, focus on enemies that you are not attacking with Sora. Yeah. Uh, coming up here, we have the summit fight. Um, there are three different ways you can end this fight. One, you can either just deal enough hits um, to all the different enemies. Uh, you can just wait an amount of time. That's obviously the slowest way always to do it. Or we can die. Because we're on critical mode, we can do that pretty quickly in three hits, actually. And that's the so. other reason we took all the potions and also unequipped cure from Donald so he wouldn't stop us from taking a death abuse right here. Nice. Obviously, that does cost you on getting potential experience there. It is worth noting on critical mode, they actually, uh, you only get 75% of the experience that you would get for any of the other difficulties. So that is slow down your leveling a little bit, but we have ways to get around that. Yeah, it's kind of this dance of where do I take my death abuse and where do I actually go for some experience? Where do I kill something along the way that is uh, not yeah. necessarily required That's in order to get a big chunk of experience? It's a pretty big part of the routing of critical mode since we actually do get a, the experience really does matter. Now our friendly shadows are back. Hey, you like these guys. They're the worst enemy one. in the game. Say it right now. Yeah. They're the worst enemy in every game. <laughs> yeah, they like to go underground, go into 2D mode as we call it, and just waste a bunch of time. It's great. You'll see him picking up ethers here and potions. Potions are just good because they're actually a lot faster in this game than they are in Cage. One, you pop them, you get a lot of health back. Um, ethers, they actually effectively almost like nerfed the amount of ethers that were all over the place in Kingdom Hearts 2 when you go to Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix because they realized how powerful they were. So there's only like four or five chests in the game we're actually going to be grabbing them from. 
You also just kind of a general theme is you're you're noticing uh, Bloody using a lot more air combos. Air combos are just faster because once you land on the ground, it resets the animation. You don't have to like wait for an entire ground combo to go off. But obviously, like it's pretty obnoxious having to do air combos on these tiny, tiny little Come enemies. On. There we go. Thanks, Donald. dude. Nice job, Donald. Yeah, that was, I'm rooting for. It's not for you. This one's for Donald. <laughs> It was a physical, too. We're going to have another wave coming up here shortly where we're going to be introduced to soldiers who are also returning from mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts 1. And so, uh, soldiers have a reaction command in this game, which is pretty cool. Yeah, reaction commands are pretty good. Uh, as Cyclone, it's a big swipe, uh, sweeping attack that can hit multiple enemies. So, yeah, so he's going to bait it out. going to try and bait it out by hitting this guy three times. I didn't actually get it that time, so we're just going to kill him. But we're going to try again when they, all the uh, soldiers spawn. So right here, going to try and hit him three times. There we go. Got the double. Nice That's double. Good. Too. So Donald as you Goofy can see, should take care of the other one. Shot. There we go. Perfect. No. Good job, Goofy. All right. <laughs> yeah. Our hands are going to be sore. Oh, right? my gosh. <laughs> Way too much. <laughs> Anytime Donald and Goofy does anything, I'm going to clap for it. <laughs> All right. So like I said, experience is a pretty big part of this run. So he kills that enemy right on the way. And yeah. Keeps I, I combo him up the stairs. It's not like it really wastes any time at all. And it's just free experience and money. It's just kind of a cute little thing that I like to do. Yep, so now we need to talk to Yen Sid and... Just going to uh, jump on his table and talk to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty normal. Oh, nice, you didn't talk to her. Yeah, so uh, our clothes are a little bit too small for us right now, so we need to get some new ones. And we get a new drive form, well, a drive form, our first drive form as yeah. well. Which is the, the full-out form, Valor form, of what you saw with that last fight with Roxas against Axel. Probably fit in one quick donation. No problem, we have a $100 donation from Death Paffer. Saying, Tripping oh, hey, a thousand dimes. Mm. Hi, BB. Hope your run goes well. And remember to be the blitz ball. <laughs> Shout out to FF10, dude. It's a good game. So Valor Form is both useful, I mean, obviously for dealing damage, but also to just move faster. You'll mm. notice one of the nice. other uh, weird things here is we've lost Don uh, Goofy, rather. <laughs> we've lost Goofy. That's because when you use a drive form, you rely on the strength of e one or both of your party members. Or sometimes none, but we'll get into that later. All right, so starting off with a reversal here to try to line this up. Go right into his double finisher again for me on crit. Okay, He's looking for a guy. samurai spawn. There it is. There it is. Wants to get rid of this guy immediately because he, if he gets going, he can mess up the fight a lot. There you go. Okay, Good not fight. bad. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like the kind of waves of enemies that come in in this game. Some of them are based on you just kill an entire wave of enemies and then another wave will spawn. Some of them are set to like specific sets of enemies that need to go away and then they'll spawn in. So Bloody knew right there he had to kill a second Dusk and that's what would have spawned the Samurai. To note, there's a uh, chest in this area that Bloody could pick up for safety later and uh, this guy's such a madman. He's just going to completely ignore it. He ain't going to grab it. I'm not scared. We're good. All right, this fight's uh, a little bit on the tough side, especially early game. You guys can explain it. Yeah, this fight has Dusks, it has Creepers, it has Assassins, and the, or it has uh, Samurai, and the worst enemy in this game is Leon. He sucks, dude. You want him to go. So the reason why we're killing these enemies in the back is to make Leon target the enemies up at the gate. We want him to stay up there. This is looking good. Because what's going to happen is after you kill all five of these, a bunch of samurai are going to spawn with creepers around them. And we want to use the samurai's reaction command, dual stance. Yeah, dual stance is a uh, very cool reaction command. You'll see a guard here, oh. hit triangle, and then have to look for the end command. It could appear on any all right, one so of those four. so they kill all guards. of them. That's Get another good. nice dual stance here. Could probably take out a couple dusks as well. Uh, no, unfortunately, uh, they, they kind of dodged about it. So... Now he's going to yeah, do a census sure. just because uh, why not at this point. And uh, now it's time to clean up some dusks. You can see Leon likes to hit things and knock them up the air. Very thankfully, Leon's combos. actually towards the gate. Yeah. So all these guys are rounded up. I need a good lock on. There we go. Yeah, trying to obviously line it up to where the blizzards are hitting everything. Yeah, I want the collateral damage. That's one good thing about blizzard. There nice. we go. There we go. That was good. We didn't really mention it, but we did get magic there. We got uh, Blizzard Dex. We gonna a fast explanation of uh, how magic works in this game before yeah, so we get magic, into our first song. Magic is a lot more varied than it used to be in KH1. They actually kind of gave, um, uh, for example, like when we get fire, you'll see a sort of kind of a barrier that acts around Sora. Blizzard is sort of a, a projectile uh, shotgun thing. What's cool about this game is that they made magic combo in a similar way that physical hits do, and you can interchange them as well. So like one physical hit, magic, another physical hit will lead to a finisher, and it won't actually sort of break it apart and you can get we get a lot of really interesting uh setups and combos out of it it's a lot of utility 
All right, cool. Uh, we're going to be getting our first song coming up here, which is uh, I'll Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. And the main reason is because, well, we're going to the Mulan world. <laughs> and you donated for and it. And you so. donated. Yeah, that too. Uh, all right. Are we ready to go? All right. You guys going to sing with me, right? Oh, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Oh, oh, Thank you. All right. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. <laughs> Did you send me daughters when I asked for sons? You're the saddest bunch I've ever met, but you can bet before we're through. Mr. I'll make a man out of you. <laughs> Tranquil as a forest, but on fire within. Once you find your center, you are sure to win. You're a spineless, pale, pathetic lot, and you haven't got a clue. Somehow I'll make a man out of you. I'm never gonna catch my breath. Sing, oh, sing about it, those who knew me. Boy, I was a fool in school for cutting gym. Dad, Dad's got him scared to death. Hope he doesn't see right through me. Now I really wish that I knew how to swim. Be, be a, a man. man. You must be swift as a coursing river. Be a man. With all the force of a great typhoon. Be a man. With all the strength of a raging fire. <gasps> Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. The time is racing toward us until the Huns arrive heed my every order and you might survive you're unsuited for the rage of war so pack up go home you through how could i make a man out of you be, be a man. man, you must be swift as a coursing river. Be a man. With all the force of a great typhoon. Be a man. With all the strength of a raging fire. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. Come on, chat, with me. Be, be a, a man. man, you must be swift as a coursing river. Be a man. With all the force of a great typhoon. Be a man. With all the strength of a raging fire. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. Ha! Ha! Yeah. All right, now come play the video game. <laughs> you hit it? Okay. Beautiful. All right. Team run. We're doing it. <laughs> All right. All right, so you saw how slow that menu went. Now, now we'll get to see how fast Bloody does them. That was weird. <laughs> I was trying to warn you. No, I oh, did you guys get tripped up on that? I apologize. <laughs> All right, so we're in uh, Land of Dragons now, as you might have told by the song. And uh, now we're actually going to be doing this little fight before we head into a few missions. And it features a lot of shadows and night walkers, which are not very uh, fun enemies, but that went pretty quickly. We're going to be using Valor a lot throughout this world because it's our yeah. main form of movement right now. It's also so all of your different drive forms will actually level up as you use them from different things. Valor form in particular levels up from just dealing hits with it. So right here, instead of him just going straight to the finisher, like I said you could do with it, Instead, you try to time. You can't guard while you're in Valor form, so that makes it a little more dangerous. But as you saw there on the left side, it just went up to level two, meaning every time he uses it after now, he'll have one more kind of uh, drive gauge to work with, making it last a little bit longer. Swapping in Donald right there, because Donald's thunder is actually really strong. Yeah, and once he took out the Nightwalkers, he just completely uh, reverted from the drive form, because fire is really good for AoE, um, especially with these shadows who are in the ground. The very and tippity tip. on top of that, he needs to actually build his drive up again. And uh, your drive builds up as you deal damage to enemies. And sometimes magic really builds
builds it up very quickly. Okay, so we got a couple ways to this fight right here. We first got all these shadows. He's just going to wait to kind of drag them all to the middle, bait them all in, and then use fires. Now, once they're all gone, he'll have three Nightwalkers to deal with here. F one full four-hit combo will take out each of them. So he was a little bit worried that one of them might attack him there, so went with the fire to be safe. Now he's got an Assault Rider. These enemies are very dangerous, but he needs to make sure that he, uh, or he knows rather when he's going to attack and uh, how to avoid it. Got two no Nightwalkers and one Assault Rider here. Donald usually is going to mess around with that other Nightwalker. That's fine. He's just going to focus on the Assault Rider right here, Luckily pushing him away from the Nightwalker. Yeah, the Nightwalker didn't bother him, so that was a pretty good mission. Mission yeah. two is the hardest of the three and very sure. easy to die on. Now, the most annoying one is definitely this last one, mission three. Uh, they All of them spawn pretty much one at a time. So he's got to, first of all, see if we can snipe this idiot. Nice. nice. Very uh, good. It's cuts a out a lot of movement time. A lot harder than it looks. And now he'll be using fire for most of the shadows here because fire does that does damage the entire time it's spinning around you. So you can use it while they're still under the ground but about to come up to try to catch them before they go right back under again. There we go. The double. <laughs> I actually didn't know that shot through the tent. So <laughs> I promise I run this game. Now the fire um, here. Now we've got some night walkers to take care of, and then we're going to be going back into Valor form for some movement immediately after this mission, which is why he swapped Goofy back in. Because, like I said, need. you need Goofy for Valor form. Also, the explosion to go into dry forms when you're going Super Saiyan can kill them as well, can deal damage as well. So, um, just cuts out the time having to watch him go into those forms. It was much more important on the prior versions of this game, like PS2 and PS3. PS4, like we said, cut out all the loads. Now you pretty much have used the drive form, you go it instantly. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we're climbing up this mountain. There are three rock walls we have to bust through here, which we have to use a reaction command in order to get through. Very nice. The, a little subtle lock on heater right there. Oh, nice, nice reaction right there. Yep. Um, little subtle lock on he'll do right there. There's lots of subtle just where you want to, which enemy you want to lock on to, and what angle you want to go at them from in order to catch other enemies in attacks. Now here he's actually spawning both of these Nightwalkers, but not killing them, because normally an Assault Rider will spawn right here in front of this wall, but if there are two Nightcrawlers on screen, they, or Nightcrawlers, um, yeah, it's, there are a oh, couple of worms X -Men's on cool. screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are enemies on screen, it can't load it. Yeah, and he's moving into uh, the next fight, the cave fight, where his uh, party will change. Do uh, Goofy, rather, will be removed from his party, so he'll automatically revert from Valor form. And he's going to have to do this fight without Valor. He'll be using quite a bit of magic on the shadows here. As you can see, there are a lot of them. But first, he's going to take out this Assault Rider because he is a big pain. Yeah, Wait, waiting for him to bait out that attack and then jumping over the attack. Now he's going to try to get them in this corner once again just to keep the, hitting all of them with fires. Mm. He does. He's trying to not use a third fire, which would actually count as a finisher because it will knock them all away. So he just does a couple of hits there, make sure to spawn in the rest of those shadows after he's killed enough of them, and then pull them back again. And once luckily, shadows all drop health as well. So even yes. though he got hit a couple times, he's still pretty safe. Now he has to pay attention to which Assault Rider uses which attack. And he's going to take out this one while keeping a close eye on the second one. And luckily, he didn't get in the way. Very nice. So we're having a pretty good fight here. Good. There it is. Yeah. You're given the leniency of getting in three. Very nice. Yep. So now Goofy's back in our party. So what do you think we're going to do? Move Valor fast. Yes. Valor form. Now, to know, there will be more, there will be better options for movement later on. This is just all we have access to really right now. They gave you those skateboards in the Roxas section, but those are going to be almost uh, non-existent throughout the rest of the game. All right, so this is probably another good place for donations. What's happening here on the Summit fight, or up, up here, is that he's uh, going to have to just take out as many Heartless as he can, get as much money and experience as he can before I think it's a minute runs out. And to note, not all of these Heartless are actually loaded um, with hitboxes and stuff, even though you can see all of them. So that's why he can't necessarily just take out all of them at once with, uh, with some magic or something. But yeah, yeah, we can get some donations in. No problem. We have a $10 donation from We Are Groot that says, Kingdom Hearts is and always will be my favorite franchise. To see this game again brings back wonderful memories. Hopefully, we will see the Kingdom Hearts 3 at a SGDQ. <laughs> 2018? 2022! 2020. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but thank you, Groot, for the donation. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Mets Monkey that says, I wanted to donate during one of my favorite games of my childhood. I will donate another 50 if the couch does an impersonation of their favorite characters from the Kingdom Hearts series. Yuck. 
I have to think about it. <laughs> you found your first love, and he found you too. <laughs> I, I hate every character. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, <laughs> I know that's why I jumped it, on you, dude. It is handsome, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I like Billy Zane. He does a good yeah, job. Yeah, Darth Vader. Yep. Okay, anyways. Um, so, yeah. Now Ping has actually turned into a new character. She has turned into Mulan. So, uh, we just got a, uh, our first uh, limit of the game. Um, her, uh, her red rocket, which we'll see uh, one usage of here in a little bit. Um, but once again, even though we're only going to be in Valor form here for like a few screens, it's still faster to yeah. use the explosion and move with it. One of the nice things about the PS4 version, as we mentioned, they removed basically all the loads, which allows us to do some cool map warps that we yeah. couldn't do before. We'll save warp right there, save some time, gets us down to the bottom of the mountain, just like that. Oh, you didn't yep. get the fire bangle there? Uh, we already bought it, didn't we? Did we? No, he did not. I, I did. don't think he did. I did. No, no, I just I just you? equipped okay. it. Okay, yeah. my bad. My oh, bad. you just equipped it? Oh, that's weird. I knew we don't... Spike didn't, so Gosh, I wasn't sure. Gosh, we're great commentators. <laughs> All right. Anyway. There's a reason there... why I'm playing the video game here. <laughs> there was singing going on. I love <laughs> you guys. Don't worry. I had like a, like a minute-long menu there. This will take like 12 seconds. All right, anyways, here's Red, Red Rocket. Red Rocket. Yeah. This is the limit that uh, Spike was alluding to earlier. Uh, limits allow you to team up with your party members, and uh, generally they have a triangle action and a, uh, an action at the top of your um, command menu there. So a lot of triangle uses, gets rid of all the Nightwalkers, and then he just has to clean Did up a few assault riders. Did any of them die? All right, so that's the first time that two of them have survived. Yeah, so that's, that's okay. That's my, that's never happened before. There's uh, just randomness GDQ. with how the fireballs will drop down. So, all right, Sean Yu, our final boss of Land of Dragons right here. Um, so there's an HP gate. This is, I guess, the first instance of the game where we're seeing HP gates, where the game just wants them to, you wants the player to get to see all the content of the game and see the second phase. So he's actually going to slow down his combo once he gets to that point. First up, he's going to bait out this reaction command deflect it and then use it because he has reaction boost on critical mode that does a big old chunk of damage so the 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 hp gate's going to be a, in just like a few hits from now so he's going to right slow down here. his combo here we slow down nice. very nice very good all right all right we're gonna get out of that i'm gonna potion i'm gonna go for a parry actually instead of a guard got it yeah got all right it. and now uh, watch the health bar here you'll see how much that reaction yeah. command does big chunk see you nerd there you go nice that's the end of Land of Dragons. All right, so what's our second Disney song? Let's be better about setting this one up. Oh, man, these are so fast Looks now. like it's going to be a whole new world. All right. Oh, really? Oh. Let's start moving. Right. Well, Whoever's doing it. <laughs> All right, I've got this one. You can... Yeah. This one's easy. You got it. Circle and X are switched. <laughs> All right. We good to go? All right. Hello. Hi. Would you like to uh, escape the palace, see the world? Do you trust me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can show you the world. It's shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes and take you wander by wander Over sideways and under on a magic carpet ride A whole new world, a new fantastic point of view no one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear that now I'm in a whole new world with you. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Indescribable feelings Soaring, tumbling, freewheeling Through an endless diamond sky A whole new world Don't you dare close your eyes A hundred thousand Hold things your breath, to it gets see. better I'm like a shooting star I've come so far 
I can't go back to where a I used to be. World. Every turn a surprise. With new horizons Every to Every moment pursue. red letter. I'll, I'll chase, chase them anywhere. anywhere. There's, There's time to spare. spare. Let me share this whole new world with you. A whole new world. A whole new world. That's where we'll be. That's where we'll be. A thrilling chase. A wondrous place for you and me. Thank you for your donations. I did pretty good. <laughs> Man, look at you go. You didn't die. And what's best is now you don't have to do any menus. <laughs> I was like, oh, I hope a whole new world ends before we get to the menus. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, we never really explained it, but gummy missions are auto scrollers of the right, game. Right, there are no ways. Yeah, they're just kind of how we traverse between worlds. You see, there's all these borders between the worlds. <laughs> right. And there's usually a lot of like bad stuff going on in the worlds. We need and, to break those down. Yeah, because they need a lot of doctors over there. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. So we really, we're really just kind of opening these borders up so we can get the doctors across the borders. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nine hundred thousand by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, do we have any donations at up? Oh, I have plenty of donations. Yeah, read them. We're just going to be walking to Hades. Yeah. No problem. I have a $25 donation from Anonymous that says, This community is one of the best. Good luck, bloody. This goes to Spike's choice. I'll donate another 25 if we can get Spike's best impression of Kingdom Hearts is light. Kingdom Hearts is light? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, here's some real talk, y'all got to realize. <laughs> we never watch the cutscenes <laughs> of these games. <laughs> So when I was like 12 and I heard that, maybe better. But anyways, Adam asked me to explain the story once. It didn't go so well. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably like, there, there's like that three hour lecture on the Kingdom Hearts <laughs> like series I like story. I thought Final Fantasy games were complicated. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, yeah, more donations. Yeah. yeah. No problem. I have a $15 donation from Super Saiyan Fife that says, Good luck, buddy. Uh, have loved the series from the start and always enjoyed seeing it crushed. Uh, never hit a million on Friday, huh? All right, Spike. I'll give my part. Here's 15 bucks to your choice for the inspiration. One million hype. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that this is probably the only game in which you can say, We're just walking to Hades. <laughs> <laughs> Not all that interesting, you know? We just want to say hi. It's just a real casual strut. By the way, we're still walking to Hades, so keep going, Adam. <laughs> all right. Uh, Prince of the Universe donates $10 that says, I'll donate another 10 if someone on the couch just attempts to explain the entire plot of Kingdom Hearts and no more and no less than 10 words. Dax, go. All right. Uh, Kid with key saves the universe. There you go. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. All right, so Hades Escape. This is uh, one of the most punishing potential deaths he can have in the run. Uh, he's going to be working with Oren here, who has a limit himself. Um, we're going to try to not use that. Uh, try to kind of conserve it, because when you use a limit, it completely depletes your MP. And MP is a great way to deal damage, stay safe. So the first thing he's doing is he locked onto that shadow on the ground. And then he used a fire on all of those hook bats because their reaction command is also very powerful. That hook bat or a uh, bat cry uh, in order to just hit everything around you. So we got three different tiers we have to work for here. Ooh. Going into the second tier, he's going to get into this corner. Hades is being a jerk, and there's nothing you can do to stop yeah, he's him. He's having it adapt here. Normally, he would have liked to do some blizzard spam on these enemies, but because of Hades' position, he's having to make this up on the fly. Oof. Ooh. Taking one hit there, but he's got a Lance Tug RC now, so we should be good there. Takes out the second Lance Soldier. Those are really the uh, the more difficult enemies on this platform. He was able to pop off a quick potion there, so we're going into the final tier, but there's actually two waves of Heartless here. He's first going to move off to the right side, hit a hook bat, drop to the ground. That will bait out his bat cry and hopefully be able to just about kill each of these Lancers. And he Hades just keeps one. coming right up to him, man. He's really not letting it Ooh, go. Okay. 
Come here, you. Uh, oh, wow. That's all right, amazing. Orin kind of deflecting. So we got, once again, like, you can kind of see how quickly that health is going down. He's only working with two. Second wave of enemies now. He's going to, again, use Bat Cry, but he's going to try That's to make sure that he hits go. all of the enemies in this, especially that large body there. Mm -hmm. And now he's going safe. Play it safe. Go straight into Orin's limit. I don't like Hades' position right there. Anytime you use a limit, that uh, just like the Mulan limit we used earlier, you're completely invulnerable while the limit is still going on. But as soon as it ends, you could be hit. Okay, not bad. Uh, right. oh. oh, we're good. I've seen this before. Ah! <laughs> very, very difficult uh, thing to do on critical mode. I'm sure if you've tried it at home, you probably died there several hundred times. I died once, walking into that loading zone. <laughs> while a fireball sniped hit me in the back, cold blooded. <laughs> That's a great uh. fight. Lost two minutes. It was great. Hey, Edo, you got a donation? Yes, I do. I actually have a $100 donation from Bizkit047. Yo! What up, Biz? It says bloody. It's the other Bizkit. <laughs> Yo, my <laughs> everyone, brother. Everyone is catching on about I our secret easy. about being brothers. <laughs> I blame Ace's Christmas card photo. Anyway, <laughs> I'm donating $10 per death. Don't Ooh. make me homeless. <laughs> Good luck on your run. Donation goes to runner's All choice. Right. Turn back. There are a few more enemies that can kill you right oh, there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you're owing us $10 per death, <laughs> I got some bad news for you. Because here comes Cerberus. Oh, no. Yo, $10 oh, no. for charity, oh, no. everyone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Biz, I am counting that. I'm holding you to that one. <laughs> So there's uh, this weird mouse creature on screen. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse is a, is a mechanic in the game where any time you die on certain, certain boss battles, certain fights, uh, Mickey has a chance to show up. And uh, Mickey just happens to deal a lot more damage than, Cer than uh, Sora can to Cerberus uh, quickly and is a lot safer. And on top of that, we know 100% that Mickey will show up in this fight. There are only, I think it's like seven or eight specific fights that Mickey can show up in. The first time you die in one of those fights, in this instance, Cerberus, he knows he's going to. So, very nice. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was a good job, Mickey. Good job. Um, the first time you die in one of those fights, Mickey will show up 100% of the time. Like the second time, potentially it drops to like 85% or something. I don't know the exact numbers, but ideally that is the only time we're going to see Mickey throughout the yeah. entire run. He might use him as a backup if he dies somewhere, but other than that, he's not guaranteed, so we don't rely on him. The other thing about Mickey is that like really early on in the game, his damage uh, scales like dramatically so that he does a lot more damage than anything else that I could have done right there, so that's why that's like super fast. Later on in the game, his pearl damage is pretty bad. It doesn't scale well, so we're just not going to be, hopefully, not seeing him much later yeah. on. And now we're in a more familiar part of Olympus Coliseum, which is kind of the actual Coliseum itself. Right. Uh, the entire time before this, we've been in the underworld. We've got to do some urn training. Yep, we're going to have to kill a bunch of urns here. We need to pick up 20 orbs for this first mission, and then the second one, we have to pick up 100. 100. And yeah. uh, other than that, it's really just kind of combo them and try to form them into large groups and wait for the big urn to be spawned in the second one. So, Edo, yeah. you could probably throw in about two more donations. No problem. We have a $100 donation from Beckworth that says, Whoa. Hey, guys, Beck here. Missing all of you guys. January can't get here fast enough. Good luck, BB. I know you're going to do well. Yeah, I'll see you at AGDQ, Beck. All of my money is going towards Hellfire because I can only imagine how good it will sound with Zem's voice. Yo, Edo, so what's like the standings right now of Disney songs, third place in the log? And we're doing them in descending order. So. It's a, a very, very close match actually right now with Little Mermaid, Part of Your World. And actually, wow, uh, Beauty and the Beast Gaston, they're like just uh, about like a hundred dollar like difference. All right, all right. Yeah, and then you have Hellfire right after Gaston. That's also like only like ten dollar difference from those Ooh. two. So wow, make it's it happen. <laughs> between Hellfire and the Six Song, you're saying? Uh, between or? between Hellfire and Gaston, it's like a ten dollar uh, difference. Okay, again, we are doing the top five songs, guys. I think bloody, you put like. 12 songs on there maybe or something? Ten. I put 10. 10 songs. Top five. Yeah. So. They show up pretty quickly, so get those donations in fast. <clears throat> right there, he just put, he just uh, uh, picked up and equipped the uh, power, or you rather use the power boost. That's the only power boost we're going to see in the entire game. So, 
Um, yeah, so it gives you a power boost, believe it or not. Uh, equipped a couple of abilities and also switched the customize of uh, Donald and Goofy there to Sora Attack, which, um, what does Sora Attack do again? I forgot. Uh, so Sora Attack is actually like a really unique AI mechanic in this game where it turns them off from doing any attacks. They'll only heal you and give you items. Yo, Goofy, that was sick. That was pretty good. <laughs> his shield is a giant hitbox. Just running blind, nailed him. <laughs> Picked up another ether on his way. He's going to be uh, meeting another one of the organization members. The evil crew of bad guys. Uh, he's going to be meeting another one of the members, just like Axel earlier on. Uh, this is going to be Demix. Yeah, and so we're actually not really fighting Demix himself. He's going. One of his gimmicks is going to spawn a hundred water. A hundred? Yeah, sure. A hundred water clones right here. Um, and the basic idea is when you hit them, they go from this kind of more like human-like form into a musical note form. Then you can use a reaction command from them called Wild Dance. The hardest part about it is that Sora's auto lock-on is constantly changing to just like whatever's closest to him or whatever specific angle you might be standing at. So it's really hard to control it considering it jumps in three phases like that. You want to stay close to Demix because that's where the other water clones will spawn from. On top of that, if you ever don't catch a reaction command, and in time, it will one-shot you. Yes. Cause so they'll turn into note form, and then you've got a handful of seconds to use them, and then they'll, yeah, <laughs> critical mode, they'll one-shot you. They do a lot of damage even on beginner, for whatever reason. They really punish you. Yeah, probably one of the most, oddly, that enemy in particular is one of the most damaging enemies in the entire game. Yeah. We also haven't really been explaining, I don't know if we explained it or not, but we couldn't use Valor Form all throughout Olympus Coliseum when we're in the Underworld version. It's just something you're locked out of, it's a story thing. Um, but now beating Demix there, now we can use it. Which is denoted by, if you look at the UI, look at Sora's uh, UI in the bottom right corner, his icon, uh, that drive, the max, since it's there, that means we can use our drive forms now. Yeah, and he's into the Pete fight now. The reason he's not really going up and attacking Pete right now is Pete has two phases. And the first phase uh, is completely timed. It's, it's just you need to survive. Yeah, I'm going to so, make him uh, orb there, and he should spawn them right here. There we yeah. go. So all he's trying to do right now is kill off the waves of enemies as fast as he possibly can. Go. Because if he's very quick, then uh, Pete will actually summon a third wave of enemies. It's That's also important to note that Meg, she's got her damage meter in the top left corner. It, she can also die, and that would end the fight. Yeah. So. Shoutouts to uh, my friend Andre, who actually had Meg die in here because the bats just destroyed her with bat cry. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> His face, Oh baby, the when that damage. happened, was pretty priceless. Oh, we got one extra. We got one yeah. extra. That's All right, him. so now we're into the it. real Pete fight, and this yeah. fight is really awful. If and he, if you yeah. die, you go all the way back to before the timed fight. All right, nice. So that he's going form. to dodge those those ghost enemies. Those ghost enemies are very, very powerful. Gonna try to it looks like he only used one uh bat cry right there. Uh, stay away, stay away, uh, stay away, stay away! Okay, yeah. <laughs> you could see those little missiles just following and following him. We were yeah, really hoping little, it wouldn't hit him. That little ghost fart was following you the whole time. <laughs> So there was, Bloody was kind of using a technique where he was never using the finisher, which would have caused a lot of recovery time, a lot of recovery animation, and making sure he was just constantly using those quick air hits, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then dropping down to reset them over and over again so that Pete wouldn't potentially go into his pinball right. phase. And after beating Pete, you actually get access to an ability called Trinity Limit, which is incredibly useful and does this. Yeah, it's, the, uh, it's the perfect tool for this sort of fight. Yeah, it, uh, the way it works, it has three different types of the attack that you can see in the bottom left corner that you can use for it that all add up to this hit counter. And then once you finish the, the attack, once you use try to hit you know triangle square X again, you can um, it will use a finisher, which will do more damage the more yeah. hits that you got. And now we're on his back, and we're going to use the RC. Which will knock these three heads down instead of having to fight them while they're up in the air. He also equipped um, ethers into his actual inventory earlier because we've, he's been picking them up, but he hasn't really been using them yet. They're going to be pretty useful in this fight. There is the potential he might not have to use the ether, so he used Trinity Limit back there once. He's definitely going to have to use it a second time. You see, it's just some time to where his MP recharged right there. Now he's going to lock onto a specific head and use and use two more phases of Trinity. Hopefully we can get a quick kill here. A lot of it is kind of luck dependent here on what head pattern I get. So we're just going to have to see what happens. So if he gets I'm the also quick... in a weird position. So we'll If he see. gets the quick kill, this is going to be his last Trinity usage ooh, in this fight. Ooh, that did a ton of Okay, damage. that's a good head pattern. Okay, so. Oh, that's not good. Okay. 
So now having to alternate between these heads as they swing around, and while you're still trying to dodge all of these purple orbs flying at you. Very close right there now. There it is. Good job. Good stuff. That saves an ether and also potentially like 15 seconds. Yes. Instead of having to use uh, another Trinity limit. Ethers are pretty tight in this route. They're just, they took most of them out of the original Kingdom Hearts 2, so we have to be pretty careful with not just spamming them all the time. Plus, the more you pick up, the more time it takes, so you really yeah. want to try to use less if you can. All right, so now instead of actually jumping right into the next Skelly Mission and going to Beast Castle, uh, this is forced after you beat two of these Disney Worlds. They come back and they want to show you the 100 Acre Wood. Um, we don't have to actually go here and like collect pages and go in and do the mini games, but once they force us in here, technically twice. Yeah, this is where we're going to get our first summon of the run, and mm -hmm. uh, Chicken Little is quite useful throughout the run. You're going to see him used a lot. I'm going to do a little Keyblade change here. That's a big reason why we went to Olympus Call of Sam was to get Hero's Crest. Has a good ability air combo boost to uh, boost our air combos. What a surprise. And uh, does a little bit more damage. So, good stuff. All right, soldiers are strong, so. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Another um, one of those fights we can death abuse through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, all those fights can end in one of three ways. You either just waste enough time, you deal enough hits. That one, you can just end the fight by uh, uh, killing all of them, or you can just take enough damage. So. Now that he's done with that, we're going to be coming up to the next coming mission, which also means the next song. So, Edo, what's it going to be? Oh, my goodness. It was such a close one. But we are doing Hunchback of Notre Dame with Hellfire. All, All right. right. Wow. Wow. All right. Where's Zam? Get up here. <laughs> Thank God we don't have to do a oh, coming mission. Yes. <laughs> Bloody can take care of that one. All right. So, again, guys, we're going to be doing five total of these. This uh, is number three. You only got two left. Sim, I love you. What? Check. Okay, cool. Click, clack. Here we go. All right, since I'm way less professional than these two. <laughs> Dude, oh, I was going to go over the phone as well. <laughs> Don't even feel bad. <laughs> Beata Maria, you know I am a righteous man. Of my virtue, I am justly proud. Beata Maria, you know I'm so much purer than the common, vulgar, weak, licentious crowd. Then tell me, Maria, why I see her dancing there, why her smoldering eyes still scorch my soul. I feel her, I see her, the sun caught in her raven hair is blazing in me out of all control. Like fire, hell fire, this fire in my skin, this burning desire is turning me to sin. It's not my fault, I'm not to blame. It is the gypsy girl, the witch who sent this flame. It's not my fault. If it God's plan, he made the devil so much stronger than a man. Protect me, Maria. Don't let this siren cast her spell. Don't let her fire sear my flesh and bone. Destroy Esmeralda and let her taste the fires of hell. Or else let her be mine and mine alone. Hell fire, dark fire, now gypsy, it's your turn. Choose me or your pyre, be mine or you will burn. God have mercy on her, God have mercy on me. But she will be mine, or she will burn. Woo! Unbelievable. Dude, we are rocking the house tonight. Wow, dude. <laughs> hey, look at that donation total. It's getting pretty close. All right, 842,000, guys. 900,000 by the end of all the Kingdom Hearts stuff. you got a few hours left. Let's make it happen. Beast Castle, what is happening? So in Beast Castle, uh, we're introduced to the Beast. 
Yeah, yeah, peace. yeah. He cool. Okay. All right. <clears throat> but at the very Are beginning here, castle? we're instead gonna have to fight some shadows or just use some fire on some shadows. Uh, you could again die to this one, but it's pretty quick to just use some uh, fires into that valor explosion there to take him out. Going to be buying a uh, sardonyx ring here. That's gonna give him some extra AP and uh, and, strength. And, and, strength. and strength. Yes, yeah. plus one strength, plus one AP. We're so. gonna get an extra accessory slot later on, so we need some extra strength. Mm. Strength is probably the most important stat in the entire run. We also didn't really explain this at the very beginning of the game, but uh, another benefit of critical mode, in addition to all these extra abilities you get and that your damage is actually increased, is that you also get 50 bonus AP right at the start of the run, uh, ability points in order to equip all of your abilities. Um, so that allows us to not have to pick up AP boosts all around the area. Um, so that's the only like additional AP we'll be giving ourselves through equips. Now we get a fun little mini game here where you try for a two cycle and never get it. Did we ever decide if this is, like, actually a thing or not? It always looks like it. It doesn't it look like it. And uh, right after this, we're going to be fighting the next boss, the, the boss, the first boss of this world, which is Thresholder. Uh, Thresholder is one of those fights that actually, surprisingly, is a lot nicer on crit, on runners anyways, because in uh, every other version of the run, you can actually one cycle, one cycle the boss but in uh, and it's usually very difficult and you lose a ton of time if you miss it but luckily in this version you actually can't but instead we get to use chicken little our first summon chicken little is a cool property where he'll pull enemies that are far uh, away from you closer in and group them together and stun them and so he does that to get rid of the gargoyles mm -hmm. then again to take out the gargoyles or sorry i <laughs> said that already uh, but then again to finish off the um the boss first the the first phase of the boss yeah, he's the perfect uh, crowd control. All right, good stuff. So nice. a lot of this fight, um, thank you. <laughs> it was pretty hard. A lot of this fight uh, is dictated around um, getting a lot of experience. So that's why I went after a lot of the Heartless. Mm. We're going to be needing that experience in the next world. So, And we're not going to be seeing any other uh, Heartless, so it's yeah. good to get it now. There's a lot of little specifics to how Chicken Little works, but we'll get into that more in the next world. One thing, if you want to go ahead and point out what's nice about walking in here with Chicken Little out. Oh, yeah. So anytime the game changes your party members forcibly, like anytime it puts Donald and Goofy walking around here yeah. instead of actually they're, being they're, in your uh, party. They're talking actors right now. Exactly. So they're out of the party. Instead of actually helping you fight or anything like that. And anytime it does that, um, the game if uh, has to you know stop your use of a summon or a drive form, anything like that. And as long as you have that out, the game will automatically give you maximum drive because they didn't want to you know have you just Im immediately use valor form and then immediately lose it and lose all your drive. Right. So it's actually a mechanic that we're going to abuse quite a bit in order to make sure that we have maximum drive uh, at the ends of certain areas. Yeah, because using Valor Form uh, and other forms later on, we'll use up three or four total drive points. Right now, we only have three that we're working with. Um, also, using summons, those uh, summons will also use up your drive bars. Yes. So, all summons will use up three to note. All right, now we are making our way over to Beast, who is uh, possessed by like anger and stuff like that, whatever. We need to knock some sense into him, so. Um, <clears throat> not a lot to this fight. You do need to use Cogsworth's reaction command to initially stun him. And then if Bloody does this right, he should be able to get in a full one cycle here. Yeah. Yep. Yep, there we go. Right as Beast is retaliating, he finished him off. So then another reaction command from Cogsworth, and he finishes off the fight. Okay. So now we're going to be putting Beast into the fight. Again, he also has a specific, uh, a world or a character specific limit to him um, called Howling Moon. Yeah, and even before that, we're going to, you know, just kind of mess with him here so he doesn't really attack the enemies. Wait. Uh, there we go. And then okay. Then... And then we're going to put on Upper Slash, which is a combo modifier we'll get into in a little bit. Also taking Beast items, just like with every party member. And now we get to I feel like nice... I want to be a little safe uh, this marathon, but yeah. 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 Nice PS4 save warp in order to move over to Belle's room where we find <laughs> out she's not there. <laughs> and then save warp immediately yeah. back out and go to the parlor. Again, this is how fast the load times here. We get to utilize this a lot more. It is actually roughly the same speed from what I understand, whether you use that save warp or not. But what's nice about it is we can use Valor form to have to move less of a distance. We're gonna have so to we'll use have Valor more of the, it in this fight. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have to use it two, in two fights, so we're going to need as much of it as possible. Little subtle thing right here at the beginning. If you move towards him, he'll do a certain attack. But if you just move backwards instead, that'll make him go into the ground. Now he's going to dodge this attack. Not bother attacking him yet. Going to go up in the chandelier. This shockwave does not hurt you, by the way, what, for whatever reason. 
Now he's going to try to actually attack him in a specific direction, shooting him back out there. Now we're going to go for windowless. Do we get it? Yeah. yeah. Good job. That is a lot harder than it looks, by the way. And that's just one of two fights that are chained together here. So you see that he has about one and a half bars of uh, drive form there. That's going to carry over into this next fight. He's going to start in Valor form. Yeah. So he's going to start off with a bunch of orbs. That's going to make it really, really difficult to actually hit him. And it's also very dangerous to me. I can only take three of these. Yeah. So he does quick double or finisher there. Them. Reverts. And then he's going to this jump into a beast limit, Twin Howl. He's going to use some damage from beast limit. And this is also just going to help manipulate the, uh, the boss to not you know, kind of move around and go into a very long time-wasting attack. Then he uses Upper Slash, that ability, uh, that combo modifier we talked about before, knock him in the air, finish him off. That fight gets incredibly obnoxious if you don't do that very uh, specifically because he'll start jumping up in, in, into the chandelier, swinging around all the uh, pillars and everything. It's Really not a fun time. It's kind of a common theme in Kingdom Hearts where if you damage them uh, quite a bit, they're going to start using their more powerful attacks, their crazier attacks to guard and just survive in general. So a lot of times we'll try to get them to a very specific HP level, like he was there right before Ooh. Beast Limit. There Yo, that was dope. Um, <laughs> you can lock onto worlds and then like warp right in front of Oop. them. So it can be pretty tight tech. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we'll be trying to like get them to a specific bar and then just try to melt all of it in kind of one hyper extended combo a lot of the time. Now we're at Disney Castle where uh, just, you know, things have gone bad. Mm -hmm. it tends to happen when the king is away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, what ends up happening here is we're going to lose Valor because once again, we're going to lose Donald and Goofy. And then we're actually going to have to do, do uh, two escort missions here with Minnie. Uh, now Minnie, it might be an escort mission, but she's the one doing all the work in these, uh, these fights or whatever you want to call them. Um, if you stand right next to her and you use her Pearl Reaction Command, she does this. Well, Ooh, this. got him right past. You told me you weren't going to do that yesterday. Mm, that's in the next one. Oh, oh. I guess, I'm sorry. I messed up for you. Ooh, all right. You deserve that. All right, I cool. did. <laughs> Ideally, Minnie never gets hit, and you can keep constantly bringing her over and having her yeah. use. Uh, her getting her hit at the end of the command. dash isn't nearly that bad because she gets the full distance, and you can still use the Reaction Command pretty quickly. It's yeah. if she gets hit, like, as I'm going right here. Like, if she gets hit before oh, she shadow. moves. Uh, we're good. Nice. We're good. Nice. Um, so she, she can only move every time you call her. She only moves a certain distance. So it's actually faster just to move then up to her and use the Pearl Reaction Command to sort of reset her and then be able to call her again immediately. Yeah, we get a second escort mission here where we're going to let Edo talk for a little bit. But just before that, I want to point out that at the end of this mission, he's also going to get uh, that extra accessory slot and equip that sardonic ring he bought earlier. So go, go for it, Edo. All right. We, <laughs> oh, my goodness. We have a $15 donation from Suzu Shiro that says, Now I want to buy the official soundtrack to Games Done Quick, the musical. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a really weird hodgepodge of Disney songs, apparently. <laughs> and one aria. And one aria. <laughs> that kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> we have a uh, $1,000 donation from Ooh. Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you. It says, Kingdom Hearts is one of my favorite video game series, so I had to donate during it. The runners, commentators, singers, and announcer are doing a great job making this an awesome run to watch. 900K hype. Let's we can do, do it. it. 846, that's gone up 7,000 since I looked back there like five minutes ago, so let's do it, guys. We, we also got a $1,300 donation from <laughs> Fan Gamer. Wow. That is a number. Saying, hey, it's Fan Gamer. These live performances of Disney songs are amazing. Keep up the good work. You're melting our hearts. Oh. I'll take all the credit because I said be a man. <laughs> Angel <Hunk. laughs> uh, We have a $100 donation from Anonymous that says, here's my favorite game growing up. Is Edo singing part of your world if it wins? No. <laughs> Let's make it happen, chat. Yo, do you want to sing my song? <laughs> Gaston, you mean? <laughs> Dude, you'd be perfect. All right, moving on. <laughs> Anyways, Timeless River. So this is uh, where you're going to check your uh, speakers, your headphones, and wonder what went on with the game audio. Uh, they, they just kind of you know, went with this old-timey look and old-timey feel with the sound, too. They're going for the aesthetics. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. This is uh, Old Timey Pete on top of that. That was He's dope. pretty easy. Yeah. Um, once again, they're kind of a, uh, 
another usage of that, getting in so many hits with the, the automatic air hits and then dropping to reset the combo and then going for it. Because once he like hit gets hit with a finisher and he falls to the ground, he'll a lot of times jump up and run around. You can't control him. Yeah. All right, so Chicken Little. This is Chicken Little World. There's a lot of specifics to how Chicken Little work. The main idea is you need Chicken Little to be right next to you and all of the enemies on screen to be far away. That's what will kind of get him to pull them back in. So you saw you hit him with those thunder with that thunder, knocking it up in the air, and then he sucked them right back down. Now Use we're going to be using back these to the middle commands. for the reaction commands as uh, all the new waves of enemies spawn. So he's going to do a cheeky little fire here on top of the uh, uh, reaction right. command. I don't think it quite landed on them though, so he's going to have to drop back down. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now That's about the, the best that could have gone without uh, actually getting all of the RCs to kill. Yeah, and there are four of these windows. We'll be using Chicken Little in three out of the four of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of specifics to this fight right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bloody, you probably know more, a little more than me. Yeah, so here. we're going to suck these guys into the very beginning. And then we want Chicken Little to be very precisely positioned so that as these guys spawn, they also get sucked in like while they're in midair. So right here. Perfect. Very All right. Nice. Get the double fire here. We're going to position Chicken Little over here so that he'll whistle. Up. Okay. He might do that. It's okay. Not the end of the world. We're going to go for a combo. All right. He pulled them right back in. We're going to just do some cleanup. Now, I want all four of these guys to be sucked in. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. There's going to be one more random hammer enemy that pops in after these guys. Their last resort. All right. Not uh, too bad. Maybe next time. Honestly, it's, uh, that fight can go just like a myriad of ways, and you can just easily die, too, to like the airplane. So I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And the hammers have a ground shake attack once they hit the ground. Yeah, a big, can big gigantic do. shock wave. Mm -hmm. Once again, Chicken Little comes out, and the enemies come in. All right. Need him to whistle these guys in. Well, most of them. A couple of them went underground, so you might have to do a little bit of cleanup here. Hit this guy. There it is. So now we have Hot Rods, which are uh, some of the more frustrating, frustrating enemies in this game, especially casually. They have this uh, kind of big uh, super armor attack when they get really low, which uh, is... Unfortunately, really hard to deal with casually, but with Chicken Little, he'll actually throw a firecracker at him, or a uh, baseball at him and knock him up in the air, which lets us deal with him. On top of that, he could just kind of pull him in. You can finish him off with physical combos. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he stunned that one with the baseball. Mm, and I get the feeling that we're going to get uh, Berserk here. Yeah, we are. Okay. Now I'm looking for a baseball, I think. There we go. There my, we go. my boy Thank Chicken Little's got my back. Yeah. Yeah, that hot rod while it was kind of sitting there dancing and stuff, it was completely invulnerable um, from attacks from Sora. So have to wait on Chicken Little to use the baseball. Yeah, so we're not going to actually use Chicken Little this time around because we aren't going to get that drive refill that those guys uh, were talking about. So instead, we're going to be using a Trinity Limit on these guys, but in a really weird way. Yeah, he's going to kill off the second wave, and then he's going to just move into the wall and shoot it with the Mega Overdrive portion. Yeah, it turns then, out yeah. there's a minimum amount of damage that Training Limit will do when it hits mm -hmm. the finisher, and that will kill all of these Rapid Thrusters, so he just wants to get to that finisher as quickly as possible. Yeah, you have to always use one, at least one of those three phases up to all three uh, in order to actually get that finisher. Yep, now we get to go back into Valor form. We're going to go fight Boat Pete. Mm -hmm. He's uh, on a boat. Um, and uh, yeah, so Valor actually even increases the damage uh, along with reaction boost uh, for these attacks right here, just hitting the trash back at him. Now with Bloody is actually, while he's kind of waiting to get on this hook, he's going to open up this chest, giving him a synth item. Uh, and we'll get to that later in the game, in a few hours, so. Yeah, that synth item is really not gonna be useful until the very end. Now, the, yeah, at any random time, uh, that reaction command will pop up that will fling you over. If you do not press triangle uh, before uh, it comes over, eh, yeah, that's extremely unlucky, yeah. unfortunately. Pretty bad luck. Normally, almost always, he's going to let you get in two full combos, which is important because that finisher does a lot of damage. Yeah, so, yeah the, the problem is that when you're using a finisher, you're locked out from using the reaction right. command, so that's exactly. why Bloody wasn't able to hit it there. Yeah, so he'll a lot of times do two full combos and then switch to one twos, so that his recovery time is better. But now we're coming up to uh, the first fight where we want to really explain a pretty crucial concept in this yeah. game called Revenge okay. Value. There are a lot of important boss mechanics. This is probably the most important one. Yeah, we're going to be fighting Pete for the second and final time here. And uh, Revenge Value is this weird concept in the game that determines when enemies will retaliate, like when they'll attack you back. 
Otherwise, you know, if you just kept hitting them over and over, they would never re uh, retaliate, and every boss would be completely easy. So you need to let them break out in some manner. It turns out that uh, the way that they did that is they have a value in the game that uh, is just a number. It says, like, 14 or something. When Pete uh, hits the number 14 for revenge value, he's going to retaliate. 12.5. Oh, OK. Close. Wow, that was pretty close. That was not bad. 12.5. So and now every right single attack in the game does different amounts of, uh, adds different amounts to that counter, to that revenge value. So a single hit might only add one, but a, uh, a fire might add three or something, or might add two. So okay. he's actually doing all of his combos specifically to yeah. manipulate the revenge value so that he knows exactly when Pete will be retaliating so he doesn't accidentally die in this fight. And here in the final phase, Boy is going to try to get a slide dash and a second hit in here because then that's going to allow him to only have to use two reaction commands to kill this nerd. There you go. Go. If you didn't quite understand uh, revenge value from that quick explanation, don't worry. We'll be sure. bringing it up again and again, uh, especially later at the like near the end of this run. We are uh, right here at our fourth out of our five Disney songs we're going to sing. So, Edo, what are we going to be doing? Oh boy, this was a really close one, um, but it looks like we are going to be singing Gaston. Okay. All right. Yo, don't have to do the uh, the gummy mission again. We get to just sit here. Nice. Awesome. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> We're heading over to uh, Port Royal, by the way, mm -hmm. or um, the uh, <laughs> or the Pirates of the Caribbean world. I, I love how this is a year and a half later, uh, and we still exactly. don't know the words. <laughs> <laughs> I can't memorize lines. All right, we on? Okay, cool. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Give me, give me like two. Seconds. All right, Spike, give me two. move one step to your right. <laughs> what? Move one step to your right. To my right. Okay. There you go. Yeah, we got oh, this. Hey, yeah, that's, these that's, handy that's, spikes wow. right here. <laughs> the technology here at SGDQ 2017. All right. All right are we doing the, the dialogue beforehand? Oh, yeah, yeah we're doing okay. the whole thing. All right. Their money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Who does this girl think she is? That girl has tangled with the wrong man. <laughs> yeah, darn right. No one says no to Gaston. Dismiss. Rejected. Publicly humiliated. Why, it's more than I can bear. Uh, more beer? What's the use? Oh, uh, sorry. There was a little pop. Yeah, no, no, wait, wait, yeah, what for? Nothing helps. I'm disgraced. Who? You? Never. Gaston, you've got to pull yourself together. Gosh, it disturbs me to see you, Gaston, looking so down in the dumps. Oh, every guy here loved to be you, Gaston, even when taking your lumps. There's no man in town as admired as you. You're everyone's favorite guy. Everyone's awed and inspired by you. And it's not very hard to see why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one's slick as Gaston. No one's quick as Gaston. No one's neck is incredibly thick as Gaston. For there's no man in town half as manly. I have to say these parts too, I forgot. Perfect a pure paragon. You can ask any Tom, Dick, or Stanley. And they'll tell you whose team they prefer to be on. No one's been like Gaston, a kingpin like Gaston. No one's got a swell cleft in his chin like Gaston. As a specimen, yes, I'm intimidating. My, what a guy. Gaston, give five hurrahs, give 12 hip hips. Gaston is the best and the rest is all drips. That was where he hit oh, him that's, with that's, in the oh, movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah. Reference, yeah. all right. Yeah. Uh, no one fights like Gaston, doused his lights like Gaston. In a wrestling match, nobody bites like Gaston. There's no one as burly and brawny. As you see, I've got biceps to spare. My God, not a bit of him scraggly or scrawny. That's right, and every last inch of me's covered in hair. Rip it open. All right, yeah. there it is. No one hits like Gaston, matches wits like Gaston. In a spitting match, nobody spits like Gaston. I'm especially good at expectorating. <laughs> Yo, 10 points for Gaston. That was dope, yeah, dude. Thanks, All right, thanks, sick. Thanks. Oh, when I was a lad, I ate four dozen eggs every morning to help me get large. 
And now that I've grown, I eat five dozen eggs, so I'm roughly the size of a boy. Woo! <laughs> My what a guy, Gaston. No one shoots like Gaston, makes those boots like Gaston, then goes tromping around wearing boots like Gaston. I use antlers in all of my decorating. My what a guy, Gaston. Oh. Fantastic. So over here, we're playing a video game. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll get back to, I guess, how the pirates work later. But right now, this is a very cool fight in the town. Chicken Little, again, being used to uh, no end. Now, one of the things we talked about before with dry forms, Spike touched on, is that dry forms level up in different ways, and summons actually level up as well, uh, which increases the amount of time that they come out. The way that summons level up is basically by using summons, by having the uh, the bar tick down a point every time um, you use a summon. Mm -hmm. So, so that's if you use a, an entire limit, then that's like three experience for the summon. Exactly, and we do want that summon to hit a couple of higher levels, so. Now, we're going to be fighting this ambush here. You can actually run away from this fight, but it turns out that we want the experience, and it's very quick to fight. As you can see, already over. Yeah. There's another specific, more specifics there with utilizing Chicken Little, moving back into that corner, locking onto the pirate, just because that's going to be the most central place when you shoot those blizzards to hit all of the enemies. We're walking up to a, uh, on, Isla, uh, on Isla de, de Muerta. Del Muerta. Yeah, Il de Muerta. Yeah, yeah. Muerta. Oh, yeah. I was like, why does that sound uh, wrong the, to me? It's, <laughs> we it's shouldn't try this. Evil, anyway, evil. so here. <laughs> uh, we want to survive this fight for a minute, yeah. but we also want to get a t Pirates just give a ton of experience, good money. They drop MP bubbles so we can refill our magic. Um, he wants to stay at this specific distance because, you see, there's two different types of pirates in this fight. There are the regular, kind of the stronger enemies. But there's also the snipers. And if you're too far away, you can use these reaction commands to sort of guard their shots. But if you're too far away, you actually can't use the reaction command, but they can still hit you. Yeah, so. and we didn't get to talk about it before, but the way that these pirates work is that they're actually invulnerable when they're in shadows. But when they're in moonlight, they're, they're completely vulnerable, yeah. and they're very susceptible to magic. So the combos he's using here, because magic is so effective on them, he's going to be using Blizzard, Blizzard, and then go into physical attacks after that, because those will be finishers, and they'll deal basically as, mount, as much damage as it would have been had it been like a Blizzard finisher. Yeah, so we're just kind of maximizing our damage. It's going pretty well so far, um, so should be able to take out an entire another wave here. And again, we just want more money and more experience, and we have to burn the timer anyway. Yeah, that was actually really good grinding yeah. there. I feel like that was a lot of pirates. Yeah. So. That's also can be it can be a real terrifying fight just getting two shot there. So we have another amb ambush fight here that's actually going to link directly into kind of the biggest fight of this world, the boat fight. He moves all the way to the left side there once again to line up this chicken little whistle right here. There's three pirates right here, and then one more bomb pirate will spawn. Um, baseball, thank you. Baseball, thank you. Picked up a potion there. Would have liked it to have been an ether, but a potion works as well. Yeah. Now, finding out that ambush is a bit slower, but we need the experience, and there is the potential for ether drops. And now Chicken Little remains out as we move into this actual fight that you have to fight, you can't run away from. We'll be so fighting out most of it in the bottom portion of this, uh, of this boat, but we'll later move on. Yeah, we've got three waves of pirates right here. We got these first, like mostly just kind of the, the bigger, stronger enemies that we're going to have to take out. Because of how they get whistled, you actually don't want to use a full four hit combo. You just want to use three because the fourth will pretty much always whiff. Hmm. After he clears out all these enemies down here, it looks like he got some potentially early spawns. Uh, this fight can get really trashy very easily. So he's got okay. one more here. He's going to actually try to get them over here on these stairs and have Chicken Little suck them in with his whistle. You can tell he's being very cautious, too, about making sure yeah. that Chicken Little pulls them in before he starts attacking them. It's incredibly easy to die in this fight. It's a common place to take yeah. the first death of the run. So we really want to avoid that, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get Chicken Little up Come there. On. Yeah. Chicken Little also has a health bar, um, even though you can't see it. And it's kind of it kind of shares with the summon gauge. So if he gets hit, then the summon gauge will shrink down real fast. But you can see you can also potentially get it back from certain attacks and certain magic. We should be able to save it right here. 
There we go. Very okay, nice, there. yeah. Really want to end that fight with Chicken Little still out because of that drive recovery mechanic we were talking about earlier. Because it changes your uh, your party, we get all that drive back, and we're going to be using it pretty shortly. Time for the worst fight in the run. It actually so it's very random how these heartless are going to react to. If any of these five barrels explode, then uh, you die. So you want to make sure you're uh, dodging them while you're doing these very slow animations, getting in place to knock them off. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so he's having to use up valor early and try to dodge this. around. Okay. Come on. Yeah, Yo, you okay, just saved good. biz ten bucks. Nice. There you go. <laughs> That is like actually like it might seem the most like the most little mundane mini game. It's actually like a pretty decent place where you could die. Right. Yeah, you either kill all of the enemies and hit them all for free, or you just kind of like hope they don't hit you and just go for it. We're running up to the boss fight of this world, Barbosa, and while we are, I just want to mention we hit eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we're that's about twenty five k raised during this during run this so, so far. far. Let's get up to nine hundred people. We can make it happen. I want to see a million by the end of Mario. So nine hundred by the end of this, a million by the end of the Mario relay. This is a hype night, guys. Let's make it happen. Now we got this Heartless up here. We actually need to kill it before Barbosa will spawn. There's a handful of different places that this Heartless can spawn, and that will actually dictate where Barbosa is. Barbosa is the same moonlight and shadow mechanic that all the pirates do on this world, so we need to make sure that we attack him very quickly and freeze him and instantly get into another combo where we do it again and repeat this process over the over and over in the fight because otherwise he's actually pretty dangerous. Yeah, he can kill you very quickly. And you can also die from him killing Jack as well. So you can't even just play it safe. He, Bloody is also being careful about keeping him away from the shadows the whole time. So he likes to keep nice. him in that corner, Good fight. moving into that loading zone. Good stuff, dude. All right, that means we're going to be going up to another gummy mission here. So Here's our last one. Our last what do we one, got? Uh, what's it going to be? And let's... Make sure we close that off. It's going to be part of your world. All right. Little Mermaid. Right. Are you part of that? Hmm? No, 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 that's, no, that's oh, just Daryl. Right. That's you. Just. <laughs> 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 you doing uh, okay back there? Never mind. No, no, no. She. <laughs> never mind. Uh, he never mind. I, you'll, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> Let's go, Kung Fu. Hello. Hey. <laughs> All right, guess we'll get going. <clears throat> Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? The girl who has everything. Look at this trove. Treasures untold, how many wonders can one cavern hold? Looking around here, you think, sure, she's got everything. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got who's it's and what's it's galore. You want thingamabobs? I've got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, wait, what do you call them? Feet. Thank you, Spike. All right. Flipping your fins, you don't get too far. Legs are required for jumping, dancing, strolling along down the, uh, wait, what's that word again? Uh, I got it, I got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Street. <laughs> Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free. Wish I could be part of that world. What would I give if I could live out of these waters? What would I say to spend a day warm on the sand? Bet you on land, they'd understand, but they don't reprimand their daughters. Bright young women, sick of swimming, ready to stand and ready to know what the people know. Ask them my questions and get some answers. What is a fire and why does it, what's the word, burn? 
When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love, love to explore a world above? Out of the sea, wish I could be part of that world. I know. I felt... Thank you again for all your donations, folks. Yeah. Uh, shout outs to Kung Fu Fruit Cup and Zim and Spike, just everybody volunteering to sing. It was. Dude, and you as well. <laughs> Thank you, Dex man. and I said, be a man. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good job. Yeah. All right, so this is the biggest menu in the game. There we go. Nice. Very nice. We don't even need to explain it. Yeah, right. So here's wisdom form. We just got this form. It's uh, the next one in addition to Valor. Uh, actually, we got it a few worlds ago, but we're just now using it. Uh, and actually, what he was doing there is he's not getting necessarily experience for himself, although you get it as well. He was killing those Heartless because uh, wisdom form actually levels up by killing Heartless. Like, each individual Heartless is one experience point. So right now, he's spawning more enemies and then using the Silver Rocks reaction command called uh, Shift Shot or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, get, getting him seven total kills between those two rooms. And uh, for a long um, time, Wisdom Form wasn't really used. Uh, yeah. Wisdom Form grinding wasn't used in the run because just thought, where are we going to kill this many Heartless? Like, where, where are we going to be able to level this up? But it's actually, uh, turns out that in Agrabah, we can level up all the way to level three by the end of it, which is all we need. And that's yeah. just so that we can get this quick run movement ability that you're seeing unlocked on yeah. Sora by default instead of just on Wisdom Form. It's yeah. better than just jogging around and uh, mm -hmm. and using a lot of drives as well. Yeah. Using a lot of drives would eventually lead us to getting into Anti-Form, or it would make routing hard, so much more convenient and fast doing it this way. Yeah, yeah have we explained Anti-Form yet? No, I think we'll probably, we probably hold off on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, but. But, um, uh, yeah, so each of, so leveling up each of the drive forms, uh, once you get each of them to level three, we'll give you a specific growth, which is a uh, movement ability. Um, so getting Valor to level three a couple worlds ago actually netted us high jump, yeah. um, which he equipped earlier. We also yeah. got a new magic recently called Reflect, and yes. we're going to be using that a lot throughout the best magic the run. Reflect in the game. is the best magic in the game. Yeah, One of the most broken things in this game. Already saw it once with the Silver Ox, but we'll be using it again pretty quickly here. He's going to bait out an attack from this enemy, hit re use Reflect, and as soon as the enemy attacks that barrier, it'll reflect a lot of damage. Um, and it's not based on the damage that the uh, enemy did to you. It's actually based on your magic power, which makes it incredibly strong. It was actually buffed in the Final Mix version because it yeah. wasn't as... Uh, it's like each version useful. of this game, they gradually buffed it more and more, going from the original Japanese version where it did chip damage to now where it's like your main tool. Yeah. This enemy you have to hit from the back, mm -hmm. uh, so that's all he's really doing there. Now We're going to get a little one. bit more uh, intermediate course to using Reflect here. Yep. Stunning this guy to... Bait it out. Yep. And then that hits everything in the area, doing luckily, lots and lots of damage. Luckily, it just so happens that the little mini Fire Lord things, uh, the Fire Dudes. Was that fire what we, Dudes. I like Fire Dudes. Call. Nice cubies. Yeah. Uh, now, the advanced course to using Reflect, we're actually going to carry oh. it over with us. Yes. If we do this correctly. He's going to time this correctly to push this enemy into the center of the arena, lock onto this guy, Reflect, and there then pull that Reflect up to him. With the Trinity, which yes. will always move you to the enemy. Because the Reflect's going to stay on top of Sora, so by using Trinity, which will snap you up to him, the Reflect actually goes off from that attack hitting it. And it's also because Trinity behaves differently when you have Donald and Goofy with you, as opposed to if you only have one or none of them. Yeah. It gives uh, you, like, a solo Trinity ability. you still be able to use something. Yeah. Now we're going to be getting to level three while killing these enemies off. He's going to be baiting out attacks. The ice cubes, when they land on the ground, you can tell that's when they're about to attack you. So he throws out the reflect. So this might look simple. You can't just spam out reflect and get reflect damage. There's the level three, which, as you can see, also gave quick run level one to Sora. That's exactly what we need. We're going to finish off the last uh, bit of these fire dudes here. Which will get us down to three hard loads. Switch from... Uh, oh. Oh, no. Uh, How okay. in the? Wow. So what? he needed to switch Aladdin to Goofy. He accidentally switched Donald to Goofy the first time, then had to fix it. We'll see how well this goes. In Might order be to be able to rough. use this Trinity, 
And now, hopefully, it'll kill everything, because if not, this is going to go pretty there's scary. Oh, my wow. Lanta. What? <laughs> that is a, a menu mistake of one input. He simply just didn't go to Aladdin. He instead went to Donald. And recovery for that is absolutely insane, because you do not have a lot of time at the end of that fight. All right, so we just gave Donald his first uh, limit of the game, Comet, and we also gave ourselves Quick Run, which, again, we got from getting Wisdom to its level 3 form. So now that's going to be our main mode of movement throughout the rest of the game. So if nothing else, just something we can fall back on when we don't have better things to move with. We're also so gonna now we're going to be using Comet. Yeah, yeah. we're going to see Comet's uh, usefulness immediately. Again, you're invulnerable during the use of any limits, so he doesn't have to worry about landing on these uh, little fire patches on the ground. And on top of that, he can use Comet Rain, the ending of that limit, the finisher of it, in Ooh, order to okay. blow up a lot of the uh, the smaller enemies immediately. And by using Valor Form right there, that explosion got rid of all the small fire and ice dudes. Mm, that's okay. I would prefer him not to bounce around like that, but we can still make it work. The Twin Lords are a very tricky fight because they aren't necessarily the hardest to you know avoid dying in or anything Ooh, like that. Wow. But you can lose a lot of time very quickly if you don't know how to manage uh, taking out the smaller guys with the bigger Yo, guys. I like the fire swag at the end for the kill. <laughs> So right. yeah, that was cool. Now we've got one final gummy mission. We're not singing during this one. <laughs> yeah, there actually will be one more. Well, there fi will, but a yeah, final yeah. final there gummy are a mission. More. Yeah, this is kind of where the run really picks up. After he goes through this gummy mission, he doesn't have another one breaking it up. And because they get this, when this game got ported to PS4, uh, the load times are god tier. So. Um, just the pace of it is crazy from here. But yeah, uh, during these, one, Edo, oh, go ahead. Yeah, one, one thing, well, I mean, just kind of get some sour please in chat because this music, I don't know what they decided to do <laughs> with this gummy music, but they were just like, guitar dude, you dude, just want to rock like out? It. And dude. they were just like, okay, and they just decided to let him go for I it. I love so. it, man. This no, is it's, like it's some good music. Now, Edo, if you could bang, please read some good donations good for us. No problem. Um, I have a $100 donation from Bongo102 that says an extra $50 if Spike will do his best Gaston flex pose. <laughs> <laughs> I've got about 12 hairs in there, you can see. <laughs> I don't think you know what the definition of flex is. No, dude, that's what he does in the movie, dude. <laughs> um, we actually have a $2,500 donation. Ooh. Wow. From the Dope Fish that says, I've been watching GDQs for seven years now, and it's always a great time. Really looking forward to the Mario Relay Race. And sorry, animals, gotta go fast. $5 from Ike Crispy King that says, I don't have much to donate, but if everyone donates a little bit, we can hit that 900K before Kingdom Hearts is over. 852 right now, let's make it, guys. All right, we're starting to get there. We have a $20 donation from Arc Razor that says, show those animals a whole new world by saving them from hellfire. References. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> 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 we have a $150 donation from Dehem that says, uh, for Edo Bean and her super cute voice, thank you. Keep the boys on the couch in line if you can. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> Announcer choice of how to spend this. We also have a $15 donation from RPD234 that says, more speedruns should be musicals. <laughs> Remember, you can buy your soundtrack later today. <laughs> <laughs> Super Metroid the musical. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zost, would you please sing during Fantoon <laughs> A Whole New World? You know, he was singing the other night. He was pretty good. I ain't going to lie. I'm an idiot. Just keeps reading donations. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, you have a $25 donation from uh, Emil that says, I'll make a man of you was amazing. Good luck on the rest of the run. Oh, Edovin is the best announcer. Also, greetings from Finland. Thank you. Appreciate it. We have a $10 uh, donation from Anonymous that says, for the 900K hype, we can do it before the run ends. Uh, Wanna Beast uh, donates $50 that says that stellar performance of Gaston was the best birthday gift anyone could ever want. Hey, happy birthday. <laughs> Feels birthday, man. <laughs> uh, we have a $50 donation from Ryan Hill that says, uh, love game them crick 
first time donating, Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and the live singing makes it even better. I see SGDQ only getting bigger and better from here. Don't forget to donate for the blindfolded run, and uh, let's receive those bits. Oh, yeah. Y'all should also, in addition to dollars, throw down some bits. Uh, if you want to cheer a little bit, because uh, we'd like to get to 5 million bits to get that blindfolded Majora's Mask by Trev. Trev, one of the best Majora's Mask players in the world. Make that happen, please. Probably get one more fast one. Yeah. No problem. We have a $150 donation from uh, Mining for Fish that says, if the entire chat donates $5, we can make it way past 900K. Easy. So let's do our part and shadow, shatter those borders. Awesome. So now we uh, took the items from Jack again, and then we put on an ability called Finishing Leap, which we'll see in a, just a moment. But before that, we've got a, a new summon, Genie, that we got from Agraba. And the really great property, Genie, is that he's not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Genie. That fight is obnoxiously long. There's so many waves. They spawn all over the place much faster. Even on Beginner, where they're taking chip damage, they'll take a death abuse through that fight. Yeah, and uh, the main reason we summon Genie there, he doesn't do anything, and Donald would uh, heal you. And on top of that, um, Genie, like actually all of your summons will heal you if you get yeah. low enough, but you take the damage so quickly that with Genie, you don't have to worry all right. about it. Now so this we, fight's going to get a little bit scary. Yeah. We take we some damage on purpose. experience boost mm -hmm. here. He's going to wait a split second to, to manipulate the position, move in, reflect the first few attacks, killing off the mole enemies, then take damage. As you can see, he's well below half health, putting him into experience boost territory. When you're below half health and you uh, kill anything while experience boost is on, you will get double the experience. So by setting that up very specifically, then spawning into dance call, the spawns of the enemies came in and got caught by it. Giving him an extra 218 experience, absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. I think we're actually a little bit over leveled. I got uh, level 18 off of the first guy, not even the yeah, second Yeah, I thing. noticed that. That's a lot, there's a lot of variance with just how many enemies you kill in all the different, uh, uh, just kind of waiting a minute fights. It's almost impossible to be over leveled in this category. So right. that's good news, honestly. Yeah, and level 18 there is very specific because it gives us a strength increase, cutting out a lot of the extra combos we have to do on this next fight in particular, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the Prison Keeper. Uh, there's a little bit of RNG right here at the beginning of Prison Keeper. There's one of three, ch three kids he can eat. He's going to eat them all in some order, but uh, it's going to be lock, shock, and barrel. So depending on which one he eats, but he's going to have to react accordingly with a different technique. Yeah, ideally he would like to be able to reflect into a trinity, I believe. Not quite able to do it here. And we're going to be doing combos here to get to this HP gate right around here. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I want. want him to do that. Dance call is incredibly powerful. Yeah, once again, it's Jack's limit, and it sucks enemies in as well as deals a lot of damage. Even when you're not using downbeat or synchronization, it still deal deals quite a bit of, uh, of damage just while he's uh, spinning there. There is a finisher to it, but it does take quite a bit of time, and the DPS isn't great, so Bloody Alex to just drop out of it right there. So because he waited for the specific HP barriers, uh, he was able to skip one of the kids being eaten, I believe, or skip a small little invulnerability phase. There we yeah, go. Bloody could tell, just kind of, he hit the HP gate at an unfortunate time, but he's got enough time there to drop down and get off the potion. And you can see this, like, really wild-looking attack, the aerial finish. It has a lot of stun properties to it, so he wants to kind of time his attack during the invulnerable phase to get that aerial finish. Now, Dance Call should be able to kill right here. Yeah, it's about, like, a bar and a half of damage, so it's quite good. Yo, we got to see the finisher. There, there we go. go. Very easy to die. I mean, we're going to keep saying it, but very easy to die in any fight. That yeah. one especially, if you aren't really you know, confident, if you aren't doing everything properly, you'll die in one or two hits pretty quickly. Yeah, I was a little scared there towards the end because he was pretty high. And when he starts biting, that's a two shot. Yeah. And if you just get hit by a stray hit while you're in the air, it makes things a little bit scary. So Back left, baby. Back left. Another save warp right here. This one will save I always seconds. forget that one. <laughs> So again, PS4 load times are crazy good. Yeah, that's just across like one loading zone, and that still saves three seconds. It's a, it's crazy. Yeah. Right. Now we're into the main boss fight of the world, Oogie Boogie. This is actually uh, Oogie always throughout the Kingdom Hearts games has some kind of gimmick fight. This is that gimmick fight. He's up on this platform. We need to knock him down. The only way to do that is to use our golf swing to get 
uh, a bunch of presents up there and overload the platform. I have never heard it called a golf swing, but I mean, it's a golf swing. It's, 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 it's four. It, yeah. <laughs> I've never. Do you think I read? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, he's right, going to so keep anyways, golf yeah. swinging. And uh, he's going to delay it that's here. That's how you spell it. He's going to delay because he the listens punch. for certain yeah. audio cues, and that punch is a one shot if it hits him. Don't want him to punch Oogie all the way back into the spikes. That would make things pretty slow. So, Yeah, because at the ends of these conveyor belts are indeed spikes that will uh, deal a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. So the entire you know, point of this fight, or the entire time of this fight, he's going to be listening for audio cues that I'm going to keep talking over because right, I'm Now this is up. where things get a little scary. Yeah, Depends each of on what these we get little here. bags will open up a Heartless, so that's why he's getting Chicken that's Little good. out. That's good, too. All right. I'm happy with that. Emerald Blues, the guys that cast yeah. wind. Oh, wait. Very, there's very one more. All right. Now, that's actually th that's an interesting case. Actually, is a good thing because yeah. it's going to prevent him from uh, summoning more bags as long as he's alive. So we're just going to keep him alive. He's just going to, you know, hang out with Chicken Little. He needs a friend. You got a friend in me. Okay. Um, so, yeah. You have to get 12 boxes up there each time to knock him down. But progressively, um, like the first time, he'll just let you get all 12 in one phase. Then it's going to be 8 and 4, and then he'll break it up 4-4-4. Four, four, four. He's, He's able gonna to do, to do just more movement. basic combos there because the uh, because he was able to leave that enemy alive. Otherwise, some more enemies would be spawned, and you might have to uh -huh. use Dance Call. That is an actually frame-perfect trick to catch that right there and be able to move over yeah, instantly. There isn't, it just wastes a few seconds. I haven't uh, set up like a, a timing for that to like just instead of mashing, so I just kind of mash for it and hope I get it. No big deal if I don't. Again, put on that slight delay because he could hear that the dice was going to fall down, so we waited until he had the iframes from the golf swing. All now, right. Bloody also has to react to which side he Oogie's going to move to, and then which side you know the blue uh, windows are going to be able to spit you out in. Also, never get caught by one of those lightning attacks because they like to basically just combo you all the way to the back, hit the spikes, and kill you. Right, now we Oogie's going to move either once or twice here. We want him to move just once. Nice. And that's what he did. Again, all working off of audio cues here. And counting the number of boxes that he's. I'm gonna be very careful about this lightning. I get iframes for using the RC, so I just get to stand in the lightning and do that. And again, RC standing for reaction command. All these times he's pressing triangle on these boxes. Yeah. And now we're pretty much home free here. All right, good fight. Go. Good fight. That is one of the worst fights to die in in the entire game. It's terrifying, and it's there's so really not much long. interactivity to it, so it's one of the worst fights in the run, for it's sure. It's very easy to kind of, you know, start muscle memory, you know, muscle right. memorying your way through it and just not really paying attention. No, this is a tougher go. world warp, so we'll just All see right. what I can do here. Good luck. Ah, hey, Atlantica. Atlantica, what's up? We're not going there. <laughs> If someone donates a million dollars, yeah, can I get a million dollars, right please? Now, I want right a <laughs> not a million total. I want a million additional right <laughs> now, and we'll go to Atlantica. All right, so we get Magnet now. That's one of the. That's also one of the best spells in the game. It has a lot of utility. You're going to see it here. We were talking about finishing leap earlier. It's one of our best uh, finisher modifiers we're going to have throughout the entire game. So we're going to be going into a Magnet and then comboing that into the finishing leap, that ground slam that you're seeing right there. Now he's going to reflect this, going directly mm, into a Magnet okay. and then into Valor form. Grabbing this Claymore with this RC, getting all of the enemy stuff. I don't think the Berserker's going to die. We're going to see what happens. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. Okay, okay, that's really good. Now, the Claymore remains on the ground for just a little bit, so he picked it up again. Okay. And okay. luckily, the other guy jumped to him, so he's able to catch all three of these nice. in the RC. He should be able to use one I'm gonna more. I'm going to catch this guy, and then I'm going to get right in the middle. These guys are going to Berserk, but they're still going to get hit by this RC. Probably. There we go. Very that's nice. Perfect. That was played so well. Because it was unfortunate, like it's pretty much only going to do half damage each time that they spread out to all the corners. A lot of people would have probably, me, probably would have run around trying to catch all of them. Bloody just got in a position where he knew they were going to come in. Because they're still going to take damage. They have that super armor, or that brick wall, as you call it. Mm -hmm. um, so just having that correct positioning. Those slam attacks that they do once they get into their desperation moves uh, is extremely powerful and very easily can kill you. So you don't want to drop that. We also just got a new drive form on top of Valor and Limit uh, form. Wisdom form called Limit Form. Limit Form is insanely useful, but we'll probably explain it a bit more once we first see its use. Yeah, there, it's a new addition to uh, Final Mix. Uh, there's some added content, and that's a new drive form. Uh, it's pretty much a, a callback to Kingdom Hearts 1 and its abilities, mm -hmm. so you'll see that later on. 
before that, we got to go back to Hollow Bastion, where we're going to use Wisdom Form for some faster movement, because we have to run quite a while for now. You get some super swag movement with Wisdom Form, because you can menu, you can talk to your menu to use stuff like Fire and Reflect, you're going to see later on, to skip over stuff like Valor Form jumps higher, Wisdom pretty much always would have to grab ledges, but now you're not going to have to see that because of using Fire to kind of extend your this jump This setup a here is further. a little bit difficult. Get that Reflect. Ah, uh, uh. sucks. Trying to skip that ledge grab, that's what yeah. you're saying. It's, uh, it's pretty precise. Using a fire here, ah. though. <laughs> no. It's okay. I'm so sad. I messed okay. up. Oh, my God. But now we're heading our way to um, this computer so we can go over to Tron World. While we're going over there, there's just a little bit of a maze and stuff, but nothing really is going on. So yeah. I think we got some time for some donations, Zeta. No problem. We have a $10 donation from Cat235 that says Gaston was on point. <laughs> We also have a twenty dollar donation um, from Flux Dog and uh, Celeda that says we're convinced. Yeah. Now we're fans of Gaston. Donation goes to Spike Vegeta and his gossamer like voice. Have fun. We have a three hundred and thirty three dollar and thirty three cent donation from Anonymous that just says heart. <laughs> In that you. specific inflection. <laughs> heart. Heart. Yeah. We have a $100 donation from Anonymous that says, Gotta love watching my favorite speedrunner run of my favorite games. Now praise your boy, Yevon. And this goes <laughs> to Naming Cloud after the man, the myth, the voice, Spike Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're in uh, Tron World or Space Paranoids. That is my favorite minigame right there. That is my favorite minigame right there. Yeah, just talking to the mic. Dude. I had it down, dude. I want to drink. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Yeah, he had to do a very, uh, very quick mini game there. Now uh, a short menu, and he's going to move on to another mini game. It's weird. You kind of have to go into space paranoids and back out, like very quick, uh, two times. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little weird that they kind of did it that we way. We got to talk to Mickey. Yeah, but instead we uh, have to do this mini game first. Box it's, is going to appear right. in a random right. location, and then you need to move near the box to get the thing to start spinning, and then it'll turn about two point. I think it's like four two point four times. or so on yeah. PS4. And, uh, and you just have to follow the box and use a drive explosion in order to... Great mini game get rid of so it. far. All right. But now we're going to be using Wisdom Form. To note, Wisdom Form, as you saw in Hollow Bastion there, a little bit faster than just doing the regular quick run that we have. Uh, but we don't want to overuse it. I think this is an okay time for us to actually talk about anti-form because we're actually about to get another form right here, Master Form, uh, which probably is the last form we'll be getting. Yeah, so the way anti-form works is that the game know, like the, the developers knew that drive forms were incredibly powerful, so they wanted to give you a punishment for just spamming drive forms everywhere. And that punishment is anti-form. That's a uh, form where Sora, you know, turns into this uh, you know dark creature and kind of yeah. has uh, all these weird abilities, things that we're not really can in control of, and it's supposed to represent like the chaos of of uh, power or something like that. I don't know. And, uh, okay. and if every time you use a drive form, you add anti points to this invisible counter. And if you add too many, then you have a chance of getting anti form in a fight. All right, so uh, <laughs> we took a hit there. Um, we can't take any more hits for the rest of Light Cycle, otherwise, we are for sure dead. But uh, let's just see how well we can do. I believe, dude. Yeah, as you can see, he got nicked once by one enemy, and that was 90% of his health. It can be easy to forget for players at a high level that. There's a ton of damage that can be dealt in one hit. He hasn't been hit a lot in this run, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of nice we at least get to see <laughs> what the critical health sounds like. Yeah, exactly. Like. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to set up this little boost right here off of that guy right there. Nice. So cool. You throw your Keyblade off of their shield, which will just boost you. Normally, it'll boost you into a wall, and he could have died right there. But he timed it right to where it just shot him down the corridor. There is another one he's going to potentially be able to do yeah. later. if uh, Right here. So well. we're going to take care of this guy. He's going to come to me. And then that green guy's going to give me the shield. And we're good. Yep. All right. Very now nice. this is the hard part. All right. Bunch of enemies in this corridor that he's got to worry about. And the color of the enemy determines what abilities they have. The white enemies have the abilities of all three of the other colors. So they can use any of their attacks randomly, despite the fact that the what types of enemies spawn where is actually completely set. There we go. All right, so now he should be pretty safe. We're getting to the end. Now there's two Devastators at the end here. Make sure you dodge them. Very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for the one day that somehow one of those Devastators like Hits snipes you. someone. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so now we're going to... We got a uh, Stitch earlier, actually, and he's going to have his yes. one use right here. Yeah, this is the only time we're going to grab him. So this is... You kind of notice, like, little minor points of grinding. We kill an enemy here and there for different things. Right now, we're actually going to get back into critical health, which very conveniently, you do that aerial dive right there. Thank that you. puts you, once again, at, like, 10% health. Anything below 50% will activate experience boost, which, again, means every enemy you kill while you're under 50% will give you double the experience. So the reason why Stitch is good is because uh, he occasionally can, and I'm not making this up, he occasionally can just lick you and give you your MP back. So hopefully he does that like the entire mm. time. Hey, there's one. Oh, nice. Okay. What they want you to do in this minigame is freeze each of these three computer screens by killing the enemies, and instead of them dropping HP orbs or anything, uh, they drop these little orbs that just the are clusters. used for yeah. the minigame. There we go. Yeah. Okay, not too slow. So now that he's taken out two monitors, the enemies will spawn in a lot faster and with a, a lot more of them. So he's going to constantly use these magnet finishing leap combos. And again, that's because he has go. that Good. finishing plus attack, that finishing plus ability um, that allows him to use two finishers and magnet counts as a finisher. So he'll do this over and over again as long as Sitch will keep licking him, which he's doing a bad job of right now. We have two backup ethers, uh, just in case Stitch isn't the nicest guy. He's doing pretty good right now. Yeah. I want to keep doing this until we hit about 20, or about uh, 1,500, 1500 away yeah. from level 24. So yeah. we're All right, that's my last we've used up ether. both ethers. We're Typically, you're close. expected to use both of them, so now it's up to Stitch. This is the one big grind session of, of the run, and it's everything else from here on out is pretty quick. We're almost so there's there. level 23. We have under 3,000 to go. One more should do it. That's good. There it is. Nice. Excellent. So ending with over 30 seconds left is pretty good there. So, um, yeah, just kind of a, just the perfect spot to get grinding in right there. Yeah, that's there. about like four and a half levels in the span of like a minute. It's, uh, it's pretty good. And, now and if I'm it's not, incredibly important. If I'm not mistaken, we're completely done with Stitch. Yes, that's it. Yeah. yeah, so if you remember the run from AGDQ 2015 or any other kind of, you know, runs from around that time, you'll know that we use, used to use every single uh, summon and quite a few times we relied on Stitch. Completely eliminated from the run now, other than that one use. All a right. lot of improvements. All right. This is one of my uh, personal favorite strats, actually, the hostile program. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so right there, he just picked up the Gaia belt. That's going to be for defense, but he's not going to equip it until later. It's not going to make a difference right now. So going into the fight, he's going to start off with quick running into the middle of the arena to close the gap, and then you go into Donald's Comet. He wants to use the finisher from Donald's Comet on uh, Hostile Program because he also has a bunch of HP gates that are determined by when you kind of break off pieces of him. So he's, it, Sora's positioning is very specific to keep him in that. You can see a, a big chunk of him just fell off. Similar right to that previous minigame, this boss has clusters, and they're used to freeze him like that. Master Form is the that uh, new drive form that we got that uses both of your allies, and it does a lot of damage with these uh, crazy combos. Need to get to about 1.9 bars right here to hit that last game. There, there it is. He just hit it. So got now all my orbs, and he, then uh, we wait, and right as he comes straight over to me, we'll freeze him. Comet again one more time, and this will just let, let him do a lot of damage while also doing combos. He's having to hit triangle while also doing these combos, so it's uh, not as easy as it might look. There you go. And there he goes. You really, at this point in the game, you're seeing all these different techniques and tools that Bloody has as he's bringing them together to make for some incredibly sexy fights. Yeah, this, fight, this game is all about uh, boss strats and beating waves of enemies, so just using the right tool for the right fight is all this uh, game is about. And you might think, you know, okay, well, once you get an upgraded version of a tool, you're just going to stick to that the whole time. There's a lot of strategies that involve everything a wide is incredibly useful. Like even right here, you see, there's one specific enemy there, the dancer. He wants to lock onto that there dancer specifically in order to like just have it in the best position. And as you see, his drive form is filling up very quickly from using these magnets. Get Chicken Little out. Reflect for extra damage. Getting kind of a double magnet effect here. That was really good. Yeah, that um, was insane. And now he ended the fight with Chicken Little out. Our party members are going to be walking around here, so he's going to have his drive refunded. Next fight, we got a bunch of dancers. Dancers are very scary. They're one of the first enemies in the game that can straight up one-shot you. You hit them like one time, and they grab you, they kill you. So he needs to get Chicken Little out and keep these guys uh, just stunned the entire fight, ideally. Now he's going to be walking around. These enemies are going to drop MP bubbles, and he wants to pick those up to extend 
to be able to use one more usage of Magnet. Magnet uses up a lot of MP. That's going to get us into the final wave. Going to throw an Aether, okay. get this up, drop out Chicken Little, so he can now start building yeah. back up his drive gauge. Watch that drive gauge. Nice. All the way yeah. up to four from two yeah. instantly. Good fight. And that is very crucial because he's going to be using Limit Form. Our first instance of Limit Form is going to be in this right. next boss fight. Demix. And you need four drive in order to use limit. This is a pretty notable boss from a lot of people's childhood. Uh, this guy so. sucks. Yeah. It's, it's pretty interesting the stress that we use to take care of this guy, especially the clones in it, for instance. You guys want to talk about that? Yeah, so we got 50 water clones out. He needs to get them under th between like 30 and 35. Now he's going to use a two-phase trinity, stand right in the middle here. Once he gets them under five forms, he can now go into the finisher and watch that health bar. Yeah. Trinity has a really yeah. crazy use here. It does an unbelievable amount of damage. Now he's going to be going into limit form after popping him into the air. He's going to use a Zantetsuken, which is just the main finisher, into an Ars Arcanum combo. You might be familiar with this Stun attack lock from straight back KH1. To this. Now he's going to reflect immediately after reverting from limit form, going to Comet for a lot of invulnerability and extra damage. And now he's going to wait for a retaliation and go into Comet Rain for some extra damage. That was beautiful. A little subtle thing right there is Bloody tried to make sure he pushed Demix into his revenge value to where he was doing that attack to where Donald's Comet wouldn't knock him up in the air or anything. He had that brick wall effect, effect essentially, so that he wasn't moving around and still getting all that damage in. Okay. Now we're throwing on that guy belt we just picked up in addition to setting up some more potions and ethers. Now we've got probably just the scariest chunk of the game, these four Final Fantasy fights. We call them the Final Fantasy fights because a different Final Fantasy character joins us for each of them. In this case, Yuffie. Yeah, and the worst part about the Final Fantasy fights is not only are they difficult and have a lot of enemies that are very hard to control, but on top of it, if you die Perfect. at any point in the Final Fantasy fights, you get sent back to before Demix. So you have to do that yep. fight again. This is one of the, like Ogi, one of the bigger chunks of the of a potential time loss in the run. Yuffie's platform isn't too bad, but we use Limit Form again uh, on top of it. Now, so we're going to try to use Limit Form by the end of the Final Fantasy fights, so we're also going to be watching our drive gauge, building that back up over these platforms. Nice magnet into Trinity usage here because every time an enemy moves in and out of a magnet, they take extra damage. So whenever you use a Trinity and a magnet together, you're getting a lot of extra damage. That large enemy you saw right there, the big blue one, the Morning Star, they're some of the scariest, they are the scariest enemies in these fights right now. He's going to have a ton of them right here in this yeah. Tifa fight. So Through he's going to using a setup by using a uh, magnet finishing leap, which the magnet is still on screen, having these different, these, uh, these soldier enemies spawn into it, and you can use their rising sun commands. Now he's going to be using a lot of magnet to try to keep these morning stars uh, incapacitated as long as possible. Tifa's actually doing a lot also, by the way. The Final Fantasy characters are generally very useful. Come on, there this, we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> needed Tifa to stun that guy because he Oh, was wow. She went after the shadows. That's a one shot, by the way. All right. There we go. All right. Yo, okay. she got that shadow, that though. scary. All right, so now we're going into the last platform, which is Cloud's platform. And we used to kind of just let Cloud do most of the work here, but we do want to level up Limit Form throughout this run. And the way Limit Form levels up is by using these limits, like the uh, Sonic Rave that he's using here. And Hit so me. he's going Thank to you. get hit intentionally in order to have MP Rage fill up his MP bar again. He's going to do it again. You. And luckily, every time that you use one you know, triangle press of a limit in, uh, in limit form, you get healed. So it works out really well so that he can hit level three through, uh, right in this fight. Or sorry, level two in this fight. Yo, Cloud, Omni Slash me, baby. Thanks, there bud. we go. Donate for Omni Slash. Yeah, by the way. do that. <laughs> All right, so we got through. That was great, by the way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, now, Dax, this fight coming up. Sucks. Does? Yeah. Tell me about it. It was about a thousand heartless on the screen. Okay, what, what, what do they call the fight? A thousand heartless fight. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's pretty cool. Do that. Keep going. What, what else with the fight? Uh, there are these, uh, what do you even call them, actually? Sentry dudes. Yeah, sentry dudes. The idea is that we're going to try to grab a bunch of these mm -hmm. and use this laser okay, attack that's going to wipe out a lot of the enemies around, like you're seeing right here. The other guys give you uh, Rising Sun, and it's not very strong. It does, it does a decent amount of damage, but you're not really clearing a lot of enemies at the time. So this is much more ideal. And Bloody's going to be trying to throw this particular one in a certain direction to... Uh, uh, he's off to the, the side. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick with him. I'm loyal. Here we go. 
You might be looking around and seeing like all these other the the robot enemies and thinking like, oh, why doesn't just go grab one of them? A lot of those uh -oh. are not real. Okay. Um. Thank you. Right, Got hit in the based back. On the PS2, so a lot of those background enemies aren't actually really there. There's only a certain area that they're actually going to spawn into, so those are leftover you know, graphical assets because PS2 can render a thousand artless at once. Yeah, you see me use thunder occasionally. That's because the uh, the surveillance robots can use one of two attacks, and if they use a longer attack, you can't snag them right away. So you use thunder to immediately push them into the better attack for us. Now this fight's not going too bad so far. It's really awful because of how random it is. And started off very rocky. Yeah, and it's mm. still very easy to die. Recover, though, you abandoned your dude. Switch to a different one. All right, there are a lot of gotta go fast, dude. right now, which is good but also scary. Oh because man, they it's can, scary. Yeah, they you want to have you. those eye frames through those. Yeah, luckily we have an ability now called Once More, which means that if he gets comboed in, uh, if he gets comboed by an enemy, it he will. won't get killed. It will only take him to one health maximum, um, or minimum rather. He can, however, die from a one-shot still. Yes. Like if something does enough damage to completely take away his health bar, he can do that. So that is probably the last surveillance robot we got. We only need one more usage of it, likely. Thanks. All right. There we go. Finish off take the last the guy, and there it is. That is definitely a very scary stretch of the run. Lots of randomness to it. Uh, deaths are very punching, especially if you die somewhere in the Final Fantasy fight, sending you back before Demix. So. Yeah, and with that, we're about two-thirds of the way through the run. Mm -hmm. Remember, folks, let's hit 900,000 as soon as we possibly can yep. for that donation total, so get them in. Yeah, so now what the game wants us to do, uh, it's a, you can probably view it as a little bit of filler, but it wants you to unlock the path, the ability to go to any of the Disney worlds in the game. So on the right side of worlds, we have to defeat yeah, Land of Dragons and Beast Castle, and on the left side, we have to beat Port Royal, Agrabah, and Halloween Town. So you have to do five worlds of cleanup right now. We're taking a quick pit stop over here. We're not actually going to defeat Zaldin right now. We're just here for the Keyblade, but we'll be back later. And the reason why he dipped into the parlor there was so he could save War back into there later on. Cool little fight here. This is actually one that uh, Bloody started on back in HDQ 2015. He started his leg of the journey on and had to recover in the middle of it. Nice, faster way of doing it this time. We get a magnet into Trinity. And again, every time enemies move in and out of that magnet, yeah. they take damage. Oh, so. Right. Better. so it's not actually that overdrive phase of Trinity that's dealing the damage, it's like Cobb's saying, it just keeps bouncing them in and out of it over and over and over again. Also on top of that, adding to the, your hit counter yes. for the uh, As the we found finisher. that out yesterday. All right, yeah. now we're going to do a bit of manipulation here. Uh, so I'm going to go back and forth between these rooms uh, seemingly for no reason, but the reason we're doing it is because this is a bulky vendor spawn. Uh, if there are no bulky vendors here, then what you can do is you can go back and forth between that bulky vendor room. And in all the other worlds, there are also other bulky vendor spawns. They will then be triggered to activate, so I can get bulky vendors over there. And what bulky so. vendors are, are these uh, just little enemies that give you prizes, that give you uh, synth items and a few other things. It's for the experience. But they mainly give you a lot of experience, yeah. and they are very easy. You don't have to kill them, you just use a reaction command on them. Even though we're leaving, we're taking Beast out of the party just to set that up for when we come back. Because each world will uh, kind of memorize that. We're going to have to come back there. We could finish it now, but the main thing is that we just wanted the Rumbling Rose Keyblade from yes. there. Because as we mentioned at the beginning of this game, Bloody on Critical Mode starts with a finishing plus, which allows him to do two finishers. Rumbling Rose has an additional finishing plus on it. So now he can do three finishers uh, on any enemy. And it provides a lot of cool strategies. Yeah, this fight, obviously pretty straightforward, but you can kind of notice this is one combo. He used three big, strong blizzards there. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't even know if we mentioned that necessarily, but magic also can be comboed, it can be slipped into your combos along with your physical attacks. And if they're used at the end, then they are applied phys uh, finisher damage as well. Uh, right there, so every time that you want to move somewhere in Port Royal, uh, you'll get ambushed by a fight. The first time we came to Port Royal, the first two times we just went ahead and uh, took the fights, killed them, got the experience, it's fast enough. These two times here, we're just going to enter the boat, exit it, and then we can move again. Yeah, but before that, we have Grim Reaper. This is the heartless boss of this, uh, this world, and he behaves like the pirates, just like Barbosa did. So you can freeze him with Blizzard, and... We know how his uh, revenge value will, you know, what, what his revenge value is at and how he'll react. So everything in this fight is, you know, scripted out 
very strongly to be able mm -hmm. to hopefully okay. kill him with one usage of Master Form. Ideally without a teleport, but we'll take one. And hopefully we can finish him off here. Look at how much damage Master Form Master does. Form is just swag. So right now he's actually got the Hero's Crest, which again, remember, gave us that air combo boost. Um, so that is why you're, in addition to getting all these big finishers, you're also getting an air combo boost, just making all okay, these not quite. It's okay. Honestly, the damage was pretty bad, and so I, that, me getting that much damage is already pretty good. All right. You might have also noticed that, that you know, he kind of reset the combo there with Master Form, and he was using a bunch of reflects. That was to kind of replace the weaker attacks of Master Form, Glad which is Peter those Pan. quick animations. Aw, oh, Peter. We used uh, to grab Peter Pan. We used to use every summon in this run. Now yeah. we don't. Peter Pan is now uh, not used nearly so much. And the reason for that is uh, we're going to get the, the reason that we don't need it at the end of this world, a big reward uh, known as a Duck Flare. Yeah, we'll get more of that later. For now, we need to collect some medallions from these gamblers. And in order to do that, you got to kill them. So uh, they are all usually timed. And some of them are actually harder to, to get than others. Some of them are pretty mm -hmm. difficult to do quickly. But now that we deal you know, quite a bit of damage and we have that third, finishing, uh, that third finisher on all of our attacks, we can use a lot of Magnet finishing leap into full combos. As well as Magnet is just stronger in the PS4 version than some of the others. Mm -hmm. There are actually multiple uh, uh, of these, multiples of these nobodies, these enemies that you can go around and find. You just have to kill any four of them. So by going to this island, we can find three quick runs. That's the hardest one to get. You only have 10 seconds to do it, but not a problem for Bloody. Yeah. So we have triple finisher here. So Magnet is counted as a finisher. And then from there, we do Magnet, Guard Break, Finishing Leap. And, and when you some use finishing leap, yeah. when you use finishing leap, you can then you're automatically put in the air, and then you can go into your air combo. So you make it makes for these really long extended combos you can do, where you do a bunch of stuff on the ground, use finishing left le finishing leap to pop you up in the air, and then use a, a whole air combo, whatever you want to do. And now, like you're seeing right here, his MP is pretty low right now, and you actually don't get a refill before the next boss, so he throws an ether right before picking up that medallion. All right, Grim Reaper two. Uh, there is uh, the gimmick of this fight is that there is a chest in the middle with the 882 medallions. We need to get all of those and put it back in, otherwise we can't actually damage this guy. He is once again just like the pirate said himself earlier. He is very weak to magic, so he starts off with using a blizzard, knocking 30 coins out and just freezing him. Thunder is the best because it will get you 50 coins knocked out, but it will. You know, not stun him in any way. It'll force him to retaliate, in fact, which right. is why you use the reflect. Mm -hmm. Now we go into some more basic combos. And uh, I guess you still have Donald. Uh, had to yeah, I forgot about goofy. that. It's okay. Yeah, just because Donald, I mean, you guys know this from playing the game casually. Donald dies very quickly. On top of that, if he's set to attack enemies, he uses magic, which could affect these uh, right. strats for this boss. So he's hit the first HP gate. Now we're going into the second phase. He's going to guard this initial attack and then go right into the reaction command. This is very specific. He's actually going to lock onto him after this reaction command. Let's soar land on the ground and then use two thunders, which hits him from all the way up in the air. And there's all our coins. Yep, so all of them off the boss. We're going to have to freeze him again so we can put them all back in the chest. And we're going to do a lot of combos to push him back into his third phase and final phase. Again, Blizzard is freezing him and allowing him to really get a lot of these, this ground damage off. I wanted a, a Reflect there. He He's wants to make sure he didn't use all of his MP. Sorry, Bloody, go for it. No, no, no. I just didn't want him to teleport. Uh, but just one little love tap, and we'll be good to go. Now we're going into the third phase, most important for sure. He needs to keep his party members alive, so he's going to go into Trinity Limit right here. Just using it right in front of that chest because of its invulnerability. Now he's going to use Master Form, and that explosion gives him some invulnerability. Enjoy this. Now we get to use a lot of thunder. Look at how quickly those numbers are decreasing for that boss counter in the top right. Triple thunder, baby. Everything's gone. We're going to run around, pick up all the medallions, and freeze them. Put them all into that chest. Nice. Now we get to finish them off with some good old combos. Come here. There we go. He waited for him to kind of get lower to the ground there. When he's near the chest, he can kind of raise up in the air, and it can just make it harder to hit those ground combos. One more. I have to wait for one more teleport. He's just a little mean today. Right. There we go. <laughs> one of the things we've noted in past runs, too, that we haven't really touched on yet here, is that in order to finish any boss, you need to use an attack that will count as a, a finishing attack, right. which 
a lot of times can just be the end of your combo, you know, just a basic finisher, or it can be magic. Magic actually acts as a finisher for bosses as well. Or we can use certain attacks like retali or um, I'm sorry, like horizontal, horizontal slash, slash, which is that move where he's moving back and forth uh, side to side in the air. So that's why you'll see that a lot on a lot of the bosses from here on out. And now we just got the best limit in the game. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, uh, there we go. That's what I wanted. I was like, what is um, a huddle attack? <laughs> There we go. Flare yep. Force. We went ahead and took Comet out just so it doesn't clutter up our menu. We're done with it. Now we're going to be using uh, Duck Flare for uh, quite a few fights throughout the rest of the run. Yeah, Duck Flare just got completely broken in the PS4 English version. Yeah, and that, so that is actually the reason uh, we didn't mention this earlier. I'm not sure if we did, but we're playing on the English version because uh, Duck Flare is only as good as it is on the English version, and it's the fastest version because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be Japanese was just a few seconds just faster. There's not a ton of text oh. in this game. Hey, what's up? There we go. Yeah, wants to make sure he knocks all three of these kids out so that they're not moving around. Dude, it's nice pretty hard to aim these. See, that one's called capture. It is. <laughs> gotcha. Have you ever played golf? It looks exactly like that. That's exactly. <laughs> you hit a lot of presents. Right. <laughs> So moving on. So right here, we talked about the RNG manipulation we did earlier for the bulky vendors. So we should have two right here. How this is where things get a bit scary. Uh, what we're yeah. actually going to do is we're going to try and experience boost this other vendor over here. Okay, well, well your boy Stitch is not going to let us do that. I think that actually might have been a better that he actually saved me uh, because I was in the wrong position there. But it's going to be okay. We, we did manipulate the other vendor in Agraba, so we'll just be able to pick that one up instead. All right. We finally get access to, to uh, some skateboards here. Mm -hmm. They throw Pretty them in a couple them. of the later worlds. Still a lot faster than quick running. All right, now this is a, a pretty scary uh, fight as well. Each of these four white knights has a present. When you collect all four of them, you're done with the fight. But much stronger enemies will spawn in after these, after three of these four die. So we have to make sure we kind of pull these guys over here to the loading zone and then start taking care of them. And there if you're go. Zetris cool. or me, you crash there. <laughs> yeah! So good job right. on not crashing the game. They've actually patched this game a couple of times, so hopefully that one's gone. Right. Yeah, this PS4 version used to have a lot of crashing issues, so... Uh, their current patch, they fixed most things. There's a few... There's one fight towards the very end that's going to yeah. be uh, yeah. quite problematic because of a, a change that they made that quite broke the fight. But before that, we got some presents to collect. This is completely random. We want big presents, not small presents. Edo, I think you know what randomness and uh, auto scrolly time things means. <laughs> no problem. Um, Sarah Stardew donates uh, $500. Oh. Saying, uh, oh, here we are. Saying, we're rooting for you, BB. Make us proud. Yo, thank you. Sarah is probably one of my uh, most well known uh, viewers of my stream. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. Now we're hopping right from there into the final boss so, of this world. This will be your introduction to Duck Flare, just how good it is. Yeah, this is the experiment fight. We used to use Peter Pan on this fight, and because Duck Flare is so good, we don't have to anymore. Immediately you can uh, use Duck Flare and just go right into the finisher pretty quickly because it does a lot of damage. It's going to push him past his first phase. It's going to be able to break him now with a full combo, just like that. It's going to guard an attack here and throw this mm. piece into the other to try to Good. reconnect them. Nice. Wasn't sure if that was going to work, so glad it did. It had to go into a specific piece, and it's based on Sora's position which way you'll throw him. Donald was uh, dead. How did Donald die? Oh, my God. All right, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, Donald must have died the second he came back. $10, Biz. <laughs> All right, we'll give that another try. Having the first death of the run in the experiment is not too uncommon. Two hours and 16 minutes into the run, pretty good. So. An unfortunate requirement of limits is that the characters that they're based on need to be alive. So, and it's, that's what makes it unfortunate that Donald has such good limits, because he obviously dies very easily. So yeah, he's the goal he here is to time. use the summon to uh, make it so that when they come out of the summon, they will come back with some health. Yeah, he doesn't actually really care about Chicken Little. There we though. go. There we go. Back into Duck Flare, we're going to be seeing this for the rest of this fight. 
There's also that top right corner. You see that limit gauge. He makes sure that he wants to use the finisher before that runs out. And he can kind of hold it in different positions. He knows he's going to get a retaliation there, so he's already planning that reflect the entire time. He was able to throw an ether. And just more duck play. All right, so we get Decisive Pumpkin as a result of that. Um, that's probably the best Keyblade that we're going to get, and we're going to be using that for the rest of the run. That is the, uh, the highest strength stat that we can get, and uh, Combo Boost, enhancing our uh, ground finishers. And we're going to be using a lot of those as we go along. Yeah, so him swapping out those Keyblades there, putting the Rumbling Rose on Elbilo's Master, Master, Master Form, and uh, putting Decisive Pumpkin on his... Uh, Just on his to be keyblade. safe. Yeah, here's the other bulky vendor he was talking about earlier. Just going to pick him up. Chicken Little will uh, take care of these guys trying to hit me. Um, actually, you know what? Here, come here. I'm not sure if I'm over-leveled or under-leveled in this situation, so I'm just going to kill these guys just for safety. Yeah. The number he's trying to hit is by the end of all the Heartless he's about to go out and fight here in the desert, he wants to be level 30 because that has a strength increase, uh, making it much, much safer and much easier to get a quick kill on Genie Jafar, the final boss of this world. Um, fighting on the carpet, you're without your other characters, Donald and Goofy, and Aladdin for that matter, Ooh. so you're without okay. a lot of tools. You also control the carpet with the right analog stick, which means... Even the minus, uh, the the most mm. minor movements of the camera will yeah. affect where your carpet position is. Had to use an extra ether there, just uh, to kind of patch things yeah. up. Th this fight's the worst. It's incredible. Okay, so hmm. I think it was a good idea that I killed those extra guys. Now we have to chase Jafar through uh, this entire area, and he's going to stop at three different spots. And each spot, you just need to give him a little love tap like that. And this is not, you know, actually Jafar. It's some creation some of Jafar. Some some sort, yeah. And uh, but at the last one, you need to make sure you use a finisher, which is why he, uh, Bloody, has made sure that he has MP left, because he's going to be using Thunder on it instead of attacking it, because you'd have to get all the way to the end of your combo. There's also just a lot of nuance in moving this carpet without ever, like, stopping in place, making sure you always have yeah. that good movement to catch up to him each time. Now we have our next carpet fight. Uh, a few more waves. The, the basic idea of this, it, it sucks, but you want to move back to the wall to kind of hit that barrier so the enemy's wall gather with you, and then throw up your magnet. It'll go to whichever enemy Sora is targeted onto. So that's why you're seeing Bloody here. He has the preference to just go up to the top so that they're not constantly going up and down. Yeah. Now, traps those off in of a, this, yeah. yeah, they traps those in a magnet in order to force this retaliation and move them down a little bit. Had thrown ether while the next couple got p picked up the magnet, finishing off the Crimson Jazz at the end of that fight. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of this beautiful combo where you are throwing up a magnet, catching the enemies that are spawning in, reflecting them, throwing up the magnet, which kills them, and then the next enemies that spawn in, they get caught in that last magnet. So you can kind of loop it together. It's one of those fights that can either be beautiful or it can suck. If, it just, if just things just go a little bit wrong, you get a little bit off. Now we've got these three locks we need to hit with all our three kind of basic magics, Fire, Blizzard, and Thunder. Yeah. Um, so the we route uh, a couple up. years ago was uh, to get the Fire one first, but we're actually going to get it last. Just mm -hmm. so happens that the routing is a bit better this time around. On yeah. top of that, we used to despawn those enemies uh, before the Thunder one, but turns out if you just move pretty quickly, you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, but I'm going to despawn these guys, cause, or at least make it so that there are less enemies just to get this fire switch yeah, makes it a little bit yeah. easier and then all i have to do is get up here and we're good to go yo nice you made it all right so um for this last bit uh it's kind of one more auto scroller of sorts where we're going to be flying around on the carpet and there's no way to speed this up uh, one thing that I find really quirky about it is that you actually can't use experience boost here, like getting below half health. It's just a property of this minigame or fight. So, again, what we're looking for here is level 30. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, Sora is always going to be, the, what you can know is Sora is always the last one to reach a level. The other characters will get there first. So we saw Goofy got level 30 there. Bloody should be able to get like 6,500 experience or so from all this. Yeah, I didn't mention uh, earlier, but level 30 is a... Uh a strength increase. And in FM, uh, when you get a, a stat increase, it increases by two. Uh, and just by the way the game scales your damage, since we're so close to the battle level, 
any tiny level up, any small change in our stats is going to make a dramatic difference in our damage output. So level 30 is like a make or break. You have to get it right now. So. But anyways, yeah, while he's finishing this up, Edo, if you want to read off a couple donations. No problem. I have a $150 donation from Swerdna that says, always been a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. Uh, kill the animals. We have a $50 donation from Peje that says, had to donate during Kingdom Hearts since it's my favorite series. Great singing, everyone. Really excited for that data org run. Good luck, bloody. Thank you. Kiki Manatee donates $20 saying, been playing the Kingdom Hearts game since the first one was released. Easily one of my favorite game series of all times. Uh, cheers to SGDQ, the staff, the runners, and the Disney songs. Also, double cheers to Bloody for making Critical Mode look effortless. Thank you. We have a $15 donation from San248 that says, Songs, Strats, Spike Vegeta, Sora, Speed. Arms. Sounds so sweet. <laughs> Arms. Sorry, I had to throw that one in there. We have a $500 donation from Anonymous uh, saying, I've never seen this game played before, and it looks like so much fun. But this it money, really is. <laughs> but this money is for your amazing singing. Um, if I donate to Omni Slash, will you sing along with One Wing Angel? <laughs> No guarantees. <laughs> That's some laughs. Probably sure won't be. Uh oh. <laughs> so cool little save warp again. PS4 uh, just makes those fast. Now he's going to be moving into this genie fight, which, as Bloody was saying, he really wanted that level up for. It's he's going to be looking to skip his desperation move, this big dark attack where he's invulnerable for a while and just wastes a ton of time. But he's got to start off first by hitting him in the abs. Don't know why, but that's yeah. where you go. Now, the weird uh, kind of the main property about this fight, the easiest way to try to get this DM skip, is that the carpet has this natural, you know, sliding dash move, and it actually can hit enemies more than once. So you actually intentionally move partially away from Genie right here, and then, uh, like, let the sliding dash hit him multiple times before continuing on your combo. So you're not just mashing X again, you're actually putting on specific delays. Bloody put up that reflect there to avoid a hold move that Gene Jafar would have used. Yeah, the thunder usage there passed an HP gate, so that way he could just get in the max amount of damage possible. Now, hopefully, yeah, he's got plenty of damage. After this roll-up, he should be able to finish him off in just a couple short combos. There nice. we go. If he didn't skip the DM, he would have wasted like 30-something seconds. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's quite dangerous once you get out of the DM, too. Yeah. So as I said, what the game is checking for at this point is that you have access to all of the different worlds. So as you can see, now that opens up the path you could go to Pride Lands after you did the gummy mission right there. So the left side is completely covered. Now on the right side, we just have Land of Dragons to go do and finishing up Beast Castle. A lot of you might remember Beast Castle is where you fought Zaldin. Um, why can't we hear Chip and Dale? Yeah, okay. it's the I talked time. about that earlier. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. It's very. I'm odd. not sure if it's the game or like audio bug, but either way, it's okay. okay. It doesn't matter. We hear them like three times. Mm, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, before we fight Zaldan, we do have these dragoons. Um, they'll telegraph their attack by that little shine right there. That means they're gonna teleport. So you know you can put up a reflect, go right into magnet, and do your thing. Come here. All right. We got these two dusks right now, and then we'll go into three more uh, dragoons. This ground attack they do right there will kill, so bloody make sure to stay away from it. We're Waiting gonna go into our reflect, again. into the magnet, and duck flare. Very, Very nice. quick end of the fight. Duck flare again. Any time that you don't really have to worry about your MP or something, you'll probably use it to finish off fights. Now we're going into one of the cooler strats of the run. If you played this game casually, if you played it as a kid, you probably remember Zaldin. Not a fun guy to fight. Yeah. Master form uh, in critical mode, as well as some very precise routing, makes this really cool. With being in master form and having those two keyblades with the two reaction boosts we have right now, we're doing a ton of damage on each of these jumps. You can stock up to nine jumps each time. And then he goes straight into duck flare again, completely buffed in this PS4 English version. And that's all it's going to be for the fight. <laughs> Unbelievable. The speed at which Bloody has to mash, too, in order to get nine jumps um, out of 
pressing that triangle button for the reaction command is just absolutely insane. Yeah, it's a pretty tiny window to do it in. So with that, we just have Land of Dragons. That Once we defeat that, that will open up the path to Emblis Coliseum, and we'll be done. So going here, our first fight is with, spoiler alert, it's Riku. Um, it's going to be a solo fight, uh, Sora versus him. So uh, we're going to be utilizing those solo strats, having stuff like Limit Form and Trinity Limit. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty much your only tools that you have at your disposal, besides also magic and combos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the ways that they kind of vary up the gameplay instead of just always sticking to one thing is by taking away your party members at various points. And we see that a lot in the final world, too. Again, using that technique where he baited out an attack from Riku, reflecting that and snapping back over to him with using Trinity so that the reflect damage then goes off. So now we'll try to get in a couple combos here, then immediately go into hmm. the okay. limit form. Get a Zantetsuken here into a Sonic Rave. Use a Sonic Rave because... Wow, that was actually really fast. Mm -hmm. Use a Sonic Rave because Riku can kind of move around randomly and it'll easily catch up to him as opposed to something like ours Wait. or Kano. I always mess this up. It's okay. Um, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now, instead of save warping, we uh, we actually use wisdom form here. We can't really save warp because we haven't been over there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it resets it now that we're kind of in the second trip of worlds. As you can see, once again, utilizing fire there just to skip out that uh, to, to skip out on that ledge grab right there. There is another bulky vendor here to note that we also manipulated, but we don't need them. Yeah, at this level point. thirty is like the last really important level in the run. So yeah. now that we've got it, we don't have to worry about experience. Dismisses uh, or reverts rather out of wisdom form there because I so, assume he's going to use a limit here. Yeah, we used um, magnet plus major drive, but we're going to use Ultima this time around actually. It's a really, uh, I don't know what it is. I think it has to do with the bolt towers and how big they are and how they just kind of collide together in the uh, magnet, but it uh, does an insane amount of hits. Yeah, with, unbelievable. Yeah. 283 hits from pressing one button. Yeah. yeah. And that's m also because of that magnet being there. All right, so now we're introduced to our next. Uh, each of the nobodies, this like different type of enemy we've been seeing in the second part of the game, they're based on a different data organization member or a different organization member. These being the snipers based on Zigbar. Uh, they can be very dangerous as well. They have a lot of shots that can one and two shot you. So good. we're going to make sure we keep them all close again with these magnets. Again, magnet and reflect are just really good tools Perfect. to handle that. They died so fast. My God. <laughs> Magnet and Reflect being really good tools just for crowd control. We're not done yet, though. The kind of theme of these revisits are very fast, very fast, very fast. Yeah. So we're going straight into the final boss of Land Dragons here. We're actually going to see some uh, genie uh, summon use. We haven't really seen much of it, but now we're actually going to get to use them. Genie actually has a different form based on each of your drive forms that you have. Right now he's in master form, and he doesn't want that. So while we're waiting in this cutscene, you can actually set him to Valor form. So as you can see, it allows you to have iframes and also just get in damage while you're kind of waiting for those lightning attacks to go on, go down. Good damage. Now, normally Bloody could have grabbed back onto the horn and not get thrown off right there, but it's faster just to go ahead and over damage him and just get in as much damage as you can. Okay. It's a little bit low on damage, but Duck Flare is really good. So it's going to just take care of the slop. Throw up a reflect, because that actually works on this. As you can see, a huge chunk of health just shot off right there. And now straight into duck, to Duck Flare, and he's going to be using Mega Duck Flare, the finisher of it, almost immediately. And there it is. There you go. As you can see, U.S. Duck Flare. Yeah. Really, really strong. Insanely strong. We're not even close to being done with it yeah. <laughs> by any means. And that does it for our revisits. We're actually going into our final gummy mission here. Uh, they randomly want you to go through one to get back to Twilight Town again, which will then send you there to the world that never was, the final dungeon. Yeah. So with that, uh, this is one of our last really good spots to read donations. So Edo, you got like three and a half minutes. Just go for it. All right. We have a $100 donation from Pop Punk Game Time that says, so glad I have the opportunity to donate to SGDQ this year. Even better that I can donate during my favorite game. Great job with the Kingdom Hearts 2 run so far. We have a $150 donation from Salamus39 saying, I've been watching GDQs for six years now. I have always used to look forward to Spike's runs, but having him on the couch is almost as good. Love you all. Keep up the good work. <laughs> We have a $20 donation from Xlaws that says, Good luck on the run, Bloody Biscuits. May the Goofy be with you. <laughs> Thank you. 
We have a $50 donation from Anyman3 that says, Hey, SGDQ, Anyman here. I want to apologize for my bad English. It's my birthday today, and my favorite game is running right now. And the voice, Spike Vegeta giving the commentary? How could this day get better? Well, we are doing something for charity. Thank you very much for the event and the entertainment you give us. You guys rock. We have a $15 donation from uh, Calculus that says, I'm not heartless or anything, but kill the animals. The Rixer donates $10 saying, hey, Cage community, Yo. Ricky here. What's up, Ricky? <laughs> Hope to see you all again uh, next AGDQ. I for sure will be going to see you all there. This community is so supportive and hardworking when it comes to optimizing these games. Also, loving the charisma on the couch. Keep it up, guys. We have a $10 donation from Nintendo 866 that says, hey. Yo, BB. <laughs> I've been super hyped to watch this all week, and you guys are doing amazing so far. Good luck on the rest, and shout outs to the KH community. Yeah, Nintendo is the current greatest of all time player of Kingdom Hearts yeah. 2. He is the GOAT. One uh, of the all time elites has, in Kingdom Hearts speedrunning. Yeah, in every single category of, every single like mainline category of KH2. He has a world record. He's a pretty incredible, dude. That is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Dude's good. And we have a lot of categories, so yeah. Um, we have a $50 donation from Asa that says, I remember leveling all the forms to max for an unnecessary amount of time in Kingdom Hearts 2. So it's definitely something to see Bloody Biscuits go through it with all without the grind. Uh, thanks, y'all, for bringing the nostalgia and keep up the amazing run. Um, Big Tasted donates $15 saying Gaston and Hellfire were incredible. Good luck on the rest of the run and let's soar to 900k. Sorry, this run needed more puns. <laughs> like someone just died in the back or there's a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> that did it. That was the straw that broke the <laughs> that camel's was the, back. That was the one. <laughs> uh, we had a $10 donation from Catherine54 that says Gaston and Lefo were amazing. Many goes to love, I mean, Spike's choice. <laughs> we have a $15 donation from Not Myself that says, had to donate again during one of my all-time favorite games to let the couch know that that was an amazing rendition of Hellfire. Although it doesn't hold a candle to the desolate tones of my favorite commentator, Spike Vegeta, send this to Spike's choice. What is your choice, Spike? <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm super vain. I'm naming Cloud me. <laughs> <laughs> Which, let me check real quick. You are in the lead right now, so <laughs> let's, uh, if you guys want to keep That was already there. an option before she <laughs> asked me where I would be. I was like, all right, put it there. Uh, Everybody else says, like, save, kill the animals. Get creative, people. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, $20 donation from Anonymous that says, DJ Karai here with my first ever GDQ donation. Good luck to Bloody on the run. Thank you. Chrisley Crow donating $5 saying, doing my $5 part, chat should do the same. Yeah, they should. We're at 860. I know we can get to 900 before. Yeah. Uh, We've got this final dungeon, and then we have all the incentive yeah. bosses that we're going to be throwing out for you guys. Exactly 15 that we're going to be throwing out. Mm -hmm. So you got a little bit, which goes by faster than you think. They're each like a minute. So, like, get your donations yeah. in now. Donate, donate, donate. All right. And cheer us some bits. <laughs> so want that $5 million for Majora's Mask. Okay. So, uh, heading into our last time in Twilight Town, uh, we got a couple of fights before we get out of here. Uh, taking a little detour here because we see some skateboard action, uh, helping us out with some movement. Um, moving up here, we're going to be using Master Genie. I don't know how this idiot works, so I'm going to let Bloody explain how he works. Yeah. Well, first we have to get through uh, what I like the, to the, the forest. The yeah. forest of death. Uh, every single shot here one-shots you, so I have to be pretty careful. Dodge that. Shout-outs to Muffin Cutie. Get behind that. <laughs> Let oh. that thing just pass straight through me. There's no way you knew that one was coming. No, I... Okay, so while you uh, are summoning things, uh, I, objects like that just phase through, mm -hmm. just like the trees. So Anyway, we actually get to the fight. Using Magnet combined with uh, Master Genie's Infinity, or it, I think it's, uh, let me see, the Arcana limit, it'll suck them in, and uh, when uh, these two are separated, they do like some pretty measly damage, but when they're together, they do a lot of hits. He's also just, 
yeah. racks up damage. He's also specifically moving away from the enemies when using the magnet, except for the samurais here. Because for most of them, you want Genie to suck them into the magnet. Yeah, it has to do with like weird invisible weight property that each of these enemies have. Yeah, for some reason, the samurais, you just want to do it right on top of them. They're kind of spreading out a little bit, which isn't exactly what you want to see, but I think we should still be fine. Yeah, your boy Mickey is a little not cool. We're good. There we go. There we go. Not bad. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. That was good. Genie damage with Magden is just absolutely insane in the 60 FPS version of this game. Yeah. yeah Shoutouts to uh, patch 1.04, because if we didn't have that come out a couple weeks ago, that whole thing would have <laughs> not oh, really yeah. worked. Uh, yeah. Every other patch that's been coming out has been kind of messing up things. Uh, Shouts to Square Enix not really knowing what they're doing, but <laughs> <laughs> the call outs. <laughs> We're close, though. We're almost there. The Dax are trying. Feelings. They're trying really hard. I know, I know. You shouldn't be so mean to them. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you get to hear the opening of this music like five times. That's the one thing I wish they would have just straight up changed <laughs> yeah. from the previous versions now that they removed the load time. String it together, man. Okay, so we've got this little pre-fight with just all these dusks. Uh, we're just going to be getting a lot of reflex into magnets to take care of them. And then Donald and Goofy are going to be taken out for Axel. And Axel can be a big issue because, again, we just we don't want, just like Mickey in that last fight where we kind of knocked them away, we want to keep all the enemies close so we can kill them as quickly as possible. So we're just having to run around and catch them. So for these nobody waves, he's going to do more or less the same thing he just did there. He's going to bait out and attack first. And then he's going to reflect Magnet into Finishing Leap and use some uh, aerial attack there for chip damage as well. Now we have Assassins. If an Assassin does a suicide, a blow-up blow yeah. attack, it will kill you. It this will is one-shot one -shot territory right now. So. Pops into Limit Form there just to get his MP refilled. Yeah, so he needs to reflect out of that because that actually will deflect an hmm. attack right okay. out of it. Uh, well... All right, so Axel kind of messed with things, so he's going to have to improvise here. There, and we, go. there we go. How did you? Okay. Well. Magnet into Trinity. Yeah. Again, every time an enemy gets hit out of the magnet and then pulled back in, it does more damage. So even though magnet itself doesn't do a lot of damage, when you're doing it 900 times, right. it does quite a bit. Okay. okay, we're coming up on uh, the only uh, changed part, you could say, like in terms of a fight for... Uh, the final mix version. We're gonna actually fight Roxas here. It's not just a cutscene. And oh. Oh. oh, that sucks. That's it's okay. okay. The cool movement tech man just uh, didn't like you today. I will mostly just let this fight free speak for itself. The way these combos work together, it's absolutely beautiful. A lot of what we're using here is abusing that revenge value, getting yeah. him to attack back at the right times. Everything about this is centered around having him retaliate exactly when we're expecting it, so that we can reflect every time he retaliates. Just listen to music. Okay, now the hard part. Okay, that's really good. Don't worry, he knew that was going to happen. Using the limit form to get that deflection off him right there. Now he's going to be using R's Arcanum. There is one more hit after that. He's not using it. Awesome. <laughs> and that strat has changed very slightly uh, yes. over the years. It's unbelievable using Ragnarok at the end of that, too, on top of... Uh, on top of some of the changes he did to use yeah. one less blizzard early on to save the MP. Yeah, it was to cut out having to use Trinity Limit at one point just to kind of link together that damage to get him under two bars. Um, you might notice that he's pretty much almost out of ethers. But he's going to do one more shopping trip yeah. here to get We have just enough ethers to make it past yeah. Roxas. And now uh, we mentioned Antiform this a little while ago. Uh, here he is. Yep. That Antiform is planned. We always know that we'll either get anti-form or final form there. There's a very uh, small percentage chance. Either way, final. all of his anti-points are gone now, and so we can safely use our, uh, our drive forms again in battle without having to worry about it. We're getting our drive back right here, using that, and then uh, we're doing that specifically to go into anti-form again, go into this room. This will give us a drive recovery because it's one of those special rooms, and that kind of takes care of things. 
Here is the next absolutely beautiful fight. We have got Zigbar. It changed a lot with how much more damage Duck Flare has done. So getting the last Five. of our ethers and We're getting use, our elixir. Yeah, we get an elixir because of that item we picked up way back in Timeless River. Yeah. That one synth item. Swapping to Hero's Crest there that we got from Lindus Coliseum because Zigbar is going to be in the air pretty much the entire time. So we want to have air combo boost. Coming up right here. So he's going to be attacking and staggering him at very specific times. First of all, he needs to go ahead and use the reaction command. And then Zigbar is going to come down and use three sets of lasers. He wants to reflect the first one just to get a little bit of chip damage in to balance out this damage. Now he's going to let him go a third time and then go into Duck Flare. Holding this, watch out for that limit gauge up there. It's going to just about run out and then he's going to time it. The number he's looking for is to get him to a just right under three bars of health. So he's going to get him one more combo here. Once he gets under three, then he's going to actually be using Valor Form. We're getting nostalgic and bringing it back. So he's going to use that to iframe through one of these, giving him that health refill. Now he's going to go up. He's going to go into a double finisher, canceling out before the last one, going into an air combo into fire, hyper extending this combo to go into the Duck Flare and go for the kill right now. This should be able to get him. See you, nerd. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> Woo! When he teleports away like that, he could have just DM'd, but instead, yeah. uh, whew. That was good. The, the, like, not only the just number of precise inputs, because <laughs> I'll be the first to say that fight is impossible. <laughs> that I, is still one of the absolute hardest fights in the game. Even on beginner mode, I tried to yeah. learn that fight, and it's just absolutely insane. And it's not only the the preciseness with, with all of your inputs, but the variety in there. He right. you know, had the point where he went into Valor Form, did two finishers, had to then revert from Valor Form to then use a fire, to then use a limit, right. to then keep using air combos all without touching the ground. So it's absolutely insane. There we go. He just re-equipped the Decisive Pumpkin there, because again, he's going back to now mostly ground combos, and he put the Oblivion Keyblade, which he just got onto Valor Form. I forgot what it was for. Oh yeah, I remember what it's for, but it's for something later on. Don't worry about it. All right, Luxor, this is Square. You're doing great. All the patches are great, man. Please fix this fight. Yeah, we used to be able to loop this fight pretty well. Unfortunately, now that's impossible on patch 1.03 and above. All right, so he was in that dice form. He just wanted to get through that dice form as quickly as possible. If we see the minigame over and over, we're going to be super happy because there we actually have um, the ability to continue this loop. A slap shot into a reflect into finisher allows us to make this happen. He's going to keep using it for us right now, which is great. We want to see this. There's one of two attacks he could use. All right, so here it okay, is. Okay, this is where we unfortunately can no longer... Really I didn't want him to uh, chase me, that one card, but yeah. he did anyway. We really can't have a reliably stable fight anymore after uh, some of the changes they made yeah. if he uses this card attack. Not liking the fact that he's using these attacks. Okay. Now, in this case, hopefully, that'll Those take cards can do cards. a ton of damage, so it's yeah. nice to get them caught in that reflect damage. So there's a specific health barrier that he's looking for. If you look at the top, the, the, like the gimmick of this fight is that we're getting that time gauge down as opposed to just health. You can lose health as well and you'll die, but you need to lower his time gauge. You, you see the time gauge uh, actual uh, uh, word at the top. You need to get it to where it's like just past that black bar that's kind of on the line with it. So he's very close. And then he should be able to link together a combo yeah. to make this work. And Luxord has a very long desperation move at the end of it. We want to skip yeah. that. We're going to start that right now using the, tr the solo Trinity just for extra damage as well as uh, you know keeping him stunned. We're then going to go straight into limit form. The explosion knock him up in the air. Go right into an Ars Arcanum. Again, we're not going to use the finishing move that Ars Arcanum. We'll explain a little bit why. But he's going to then poke him a couple more times, get him down to the right yeah. health value. Just has the perfect amount of stagger and see ya. Perfect. Besides him breaking out that one time, that actually was a pretty good fight. Yeah, he kept giving you the minigame, which is yeah. fantastic. It's exactly what we want to see. And uh, as we mentioned a couple times, every time he's using Ars Arcanum, he's going all the way up until the last hit, but not using right, it. That's right. That's because of that revenge value mechanic. Ars Arcanum does a lot of damage, so it adds a lot of revenge value. It's like nine or something that So this it adds, is probably the most technical fight. But they coded on the end. In the run. Uh, with the addition of Duck Flare, it's pretty crazy that the strat Yeah, you here. might remember this used to be a Peter Pan fight. Yeah. Now it's, yeah, much more complicated. All right. 
One good thing is that Donald's dead. That makes things easier. <laughs> it ages the meme. He actually means it. Yeah, main idea is he wants to keep him up against the wall right here so that he isn't dashing all around the arena and more of these reflects actually hit. Yeah, that's a triple reflect right there. It's three, three individual reflects hitting him. All right, good. Now, going into limit form here again, more of that Xanatsukin into Ars Arcanum. If he drops any bit of this, he'll go into his Berserk phase. Now right into Dr. Let him Flair. land. You want to let them land because if you don't, they'll just get popped up in the air and a lot of stuff will whiff. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Duck Flare is just crazy, man. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. A lot of these Duck Flare strats are relatively new with the addition of the PS4. It was powered up on the PS3 version, but the load times yeah. were so bad for that, we saved literally like an hour and 40 minutes on load screen. The other crazy PS4. thing about that fight with how technically demanding it is, is he also went to limit form, so he used his drive gauge, but he built all the way back up to three drive because he wants to be able to use wisdom form right here for movement. Yes. So Giving be able him to that just that extra quick barely run. Barely get up to three drive while also having to keep track of everything else that's going on. Edo, let's hear two donations while we're climbing this. All right, we have a $10 donation from Asa that says, hey. BB, good luck, my boy. You hope you have an awesome time. Wish I could have made it this year, but the grind has got me on lock. I'll see you at AGDQ, dude. Yeah. Shout outs to the goons. Yeah, shout outs to the goon squad, and uh, good luck at Evo, dude. And then we also got a $10 donation from Red Roses that says, Go, BB, go. Do it for best girl. All right, now we're into our first fight with Xemnas. And this fight is going to have this long building RC that we're going to do here. Hit the star for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every Perfect. Time. <laughs> so this building RC is, you can, I mean, you just watch it. It's, it takes a long time. It's, it it's, does quite a bit of damage. Yeah. But it's really not worth it all the time. So hopefully this will be the only time we see this in this fight. There are actually three different reaction commands he could have used there. One that just dodges him, second that does a little bit of damage, and this third one which does a ton of damage. Now he's going to land here, jump back into the air and do an aerial combo. This is the strat that Bloody learned right before the run at AGDQ 2015, so I'm glad that he was able to, to completely destroy it this time. So with these reflect combos, if you just spam a bunch of reflects, it will only do one. Uh, it'll only give yourself one addition of reflect. But by using reflect, slap shot, which is that keyblade attack, and then going into another reflect, uh, and then going with the guard break after that, it makes each of those different reflects do individual damage. Yeah. Making for some crazy combos. Xemnas can use either a shorter combo, a longer combo, uh, this, is the, this being the shorter, or he can put up a barrier call and say guard. And so Bloody has to react to all of them, and he wants to try to get the short combo a lot. And now we're going for the skip on that second building RC. Nice. He and actually, Xemnas could have possibly gotten out of that, but Bloody used... Last hit, wow. Xemnas is one of those fights that has a lot of recovery, so the R's loop uh, mm -hmm. isn't nearly as effective on him. You have to be very, very precise. Yeah. Uh, or you gotta mash real hard, which is what I do. All right, so final stretch now. Final battles. All right. All right, first phase is uh, best phase? Definitely the best phase. Got to slice up some buildings. Yo, nice, dude. So the boys in chat who know about the emote, you can go ahead and start spamming it. Let's go. All right. Now we're just basically making our way to that large ship there. Uh, to try to take out these engines that are powering it. First, we have to go through some more buildings, get more reaction commands. All right, so coming up here, kind of the... Uh, this is all linking into one fight, which is the core fight. Um, we're going to have to defeat a lot of nobodies to get to the next phases of Xemnas. So he's going to be using up Magnet to actually kill these different enemies, which will knock them into the background and gradually hit these different these left and right cylinders. Yeah, as you can tell by the health bars at the uh, top right and top left, there is a charge meter in the middle, too, that would fire a laser, but we're not really worried about that as long as we use all these uh, Magnets properly. 
He's going to save an Aether here by he's going to get one more Magnet usage here. And then for the second set of enemies, he's actually going to jump and use a use Master Form, which the explosion from that will also make all these enemies fall. You only have to hit each of them once to get them to fall into the background. Now he'll get to use one more Magnet here because, again, going into Dry Form will refill your MP. And then you can just hit one more, and that'll get him what he is. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Magnet form, or Magnet also just lasts longer in Master Form. All right, so here's the core fight. He's going to be using Magnet on it, uh, which with a series of combos will also just make the enemy spawn a lot faster. Now, Master Form <clears throat> he has been reverted. We're going to be at just doing some more Magnet into Trinity combos here on this, on these first wave enemies, and uh, hopefully the second. Yeah, there are two waves of no bodies here. And normally you have to run the health bar of this core down pretty far, but by utilizing Magnet, for whatever reason, it just, they spawn a lot faster. Just now we're good pal genies back out. We're going to switch oh. him over to Master Form again and do those same yeah. Magnet into uh, genie limit combos that we were seeing outside of the mansion with Mickey. To note, if Bloody had gotten Final Form, uh, when he got anti-form, got final form instead. He could have used final genie here. Saves like 15 seconds, but it's extremely rare to get it. And again, all these assassins, like you, they will one-shot you if they go for their for their death animation. Getting rid of genie, we're gonna have to build up our drive again. And on top of that, we just want to use duck flare on the core here because it's still really powerful. Now he's built up to the Valor, and this is probably why he has Oblivion the on The AOE yeah. finisher right there deals Does a ton. Okay. Um, I'm going to get in the air. So there, yeah, that building attack, that's a one shot. If that shoots in and hits you. So Now he'll also use Valor coming in here right at the beginning of Xemnas using its little slide dash effect to close in. He's also going to try to get off this finisher, which will give him some iframes. If he times it correctly to not get mm -hmm. hit by that. Oh, okay. He timed it a little poorly there. See if he can recover from it. Ooh, wow. That swipe attack is also a one shot. And he's That's, only yeah. half health. That sucks. And yeah, unfortunately. Bad timing, unfortunately. I That's right. Definitely did not want to get hit. Yeah. It's a real quick death. No big deal. All right. Let's try that again. Huh. Oh, a little late on that one, overcompensating. Again, oh, if he does alive. not reflect those, he will die. Like Donald just standing there looking around. <laughs> he is ready, dude. All right now, back in Duck Flare, our favorite limit. Can get as much damage as possible and then go into the Mega Duck Flare. There we go. Nice. Nice. Very pretty fight when it goes correctly. Now we got to go into. <sighs> Bit of a slow fight. At the, just why did why did they put? This why in is this in the game? So this is Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, uh, there are five phases uh, to killing him. Uh, you got to break the tail, the two little engines on the side, and then both of his wings. Uh, the basic idea behind this is that you can absorb the energy from those different lasers the enemies are shooting at you, and you can also just shoot the enemies, which they will then fall into these different pieces and break them as well. I'm using a technique here yes. called finisher canceling where I'm able to use infinite finishers by canceling the finisher with a Riku laser. So that allows me to hit these bombs into the body parts a lot faster, speeds things up. He also has to absorb the energy in order to get yeah, that Yeah, at the laser. same time, which makes this actually a pretty scary fight for me. Because if I get hit like once, then I'm down to like pretty much one health. Yeah, that's the worst part about this fight. It's long, boring, and not safe. Right. <laughs> it's very easy to die in this Get fight. hit two or three times, be a little late on absorbing those lasers. There's a lot of routing that actually goes into this fight. It's not just, all right, go. Like with when you'll use your mega laser or not. Right here, since you're right up in its business. Yeah! Last couple of enemies to finish it off. He did specifically yeah. wait to finish it off until he could get some more energy there, so that mm -hmm. way he'll be able to charge up another Mega Laser for this next piece. All right, so now for the wings. These are the last two pieces. Uh, in this phase, he'll start uh, shooting off homing missiles. There really is no, you can't absorb them. The only way is to just avoid them and hopefully parry them. Sometimes you'll just get hit, though. Yeah, like right there. Yeah. There's just kind of no way to, for me to escape. Again, one-fourth of his health just from one missile there. Yeah. 
now we should be able to get this a is the bit scariest of part right here this wing in particular yeah bloody likes to save this last mega laser for the fifth phase is going to try to just take out the health bar with killing the enemies instead should be safe go. okay Good job. now All he's right. going to put on a slight delay before this fifth i have phase. to he's be a bit careful because the bomb is still alive and he's actually going to home in on me right there yep all right, now we got missiles again. Again, using that finisher canceling to keep giving nice. him a finisher to hopefully reflect the, right. that uh, missile like he did. Now we're just going to blow up this wing. All we have to do is get through the first wave of bombs and then just uh, let the mega laser rock and we'll take care of it. Right there. All there right. it is. Two fights left. We just saw Armored Zemnus or Throne Zemnus sitting down. We now have to face him again. Um, this time he's broken up into three phases, uh, which is thankfully down one phase from the original Kingdom Hearts 2, where after you hit him to a specific HP gate, he'll then knock you out. Getting that slide dash and then the reflect again, pulling hit you into him to get that reflect damage. Now he needs to be very careful because, again, those swipe attacks will one-shot you. So Bloody has to pay a lot, a lot of attention to revenge value and just once you stagger him enough. That's the first HP gate. You jump up and just take it. Now he's going to be looking for specific buildings in order to use these reaction commands. They'll spawn consistently. Immediately after this building RC is finished, he's going to do an, uh, a double jump, an aerial dodge, and then glide over. That's actually skipping an attack that the enemy can use here called uh, or these snow, big snowflake lasers that you've seen a, a few times, which just makes it a lot nicer than having to try to navigate yeah. through those. Bloody put on a subtle little delay there right at the start um, just so he wouldn't have to deal with the brick wall animation. Make sure that slide dash was going to stagger him. Again, those snowflake lasers you're seeing now, that's what he's skipping at the end of this uh, be fine. building phase. There we go. Right down here. <laughs> I, I, th I think I may have flew over it a little bit, but uh, it's there. I was like, did it spawn like as you were pressing triangle? All right, so once again, aerial dodge and then fly. Flying over the trigger for it. Final right about here. here. So we'll drop. All right, good. He's going to... There we go. Letting each reflect actually uh, do damage. I'm going to be a little the safe. There we go. It's a good thing I was. Making sure to throw that ether before the fight was over. Because, okay. we get, yeah, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. All right. So here he is. Here is the final boss of this game, Final Xemnas. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, every HD version of this game had broken the reaction command for this boss. Now they finally fixed it. Yeah. Uh, this is an absolutely beautiful. He's gonna grab. He's well. He's gonna try to grab you, but now you're gonna start reflecting around and using reflect at very specific spots to get it to go off and do damage. He's not just throwing it out whenever. He's timing. All right, you're gonna have like two reversals here, then throw a reflect. Sometimes I'll do a double reflect. But yeah, lots of damage there. Gonna get a potion out to get that health hey, there back he is. up. Good. Now um, the number he's looking. I'm gonna for, be safe and yeah. Okay, that's good. The, the number you're looking for here is four bars. So he's going to try to get him right below, right above there, because that's the point where he's going to want to go into his laser's face. So he's just using air combos to get him close. Now limit for him to have the iframes through that, go into his ground combo, into the R's. Once again, stopping one hit short. Now, a little quirk about this fight is that you can actually push Final Xemnas out of bounds, and you can't go out there yourself. So he needs to make sure he kind of angles him in certain ways to keep him in the arena. Now, we're actually going into the throw animation again. That sometimes can happen. But Bloody, I mean, he just went through it. He popped that elixir, getting all of his MP back. As soon as he gets to about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 bars of health, yeah. then the fight's over. Oh, I guess we won't be using the phone. All right. So time is not coming up quite yet. We have to go through this entire section right here where we uh, deflect the laser dome, as it's uh, well known. And then uh, we have to go through another 40-second cutscene, and then we can feel, finally deal the final blow. What is your PB in this game, boy? Uh, it's a 30021, I want to say. Pretty, so, pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing my time right, uh, right yeah. down below. It's actually a pretty good run. Very, I'm very, very close. Very happy with it. You're, you're just getting countless pog champs in the chat right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a really, really solid uh, marathon run of this. Only two deaths over yeah. the course of it. Two deaths. Pretty, pretty fast deaths too. But I was, I'm really happy how I played. 
want to note that coming up right after this, we have uh, basically every super boss you want from this game. We're actually going to be going right into the bonus game first, yeah. uh, which is this we'll, game We'll do again. Data Org first, I believe. We'll yeah. be fighting Data Org. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's purely because uh, it's he's already on the profile for Data Org, and... Uh, he'll have to actually, you know, load a save for it and stuff. Right. And for the others, he'll have to switch to a different uh, profile. As well as it's just kind of fun to end, up, uh, end on the boss fights. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Time is coming up here in just a second. Just go ahead and mash. We're going to be using Session to kill him. Time. Hey! Wow. 302. That was a 301. That was a 59. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> all right. Good job, bud. You're Actually, good. it was a, it was a 301 because he started. He didn't uh, right back at the beginning of the run. He didn't like start at the right. Oh place. yeah, you didn't start. Right. Regardless, now like uh, let's go ahead and get set up for data org since okay. uh, you know want to save as much time as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the application first. Yeah, and that's not only there's no soft reset for Kingdom Hearts 2, but even if there were, like mm -hmm. the closing application is actually required because at the very beginning of the data org.